Yeah. All right, all right. Now we're live. Yeah, all right. I think we're live. All right. We live. We, there we go. All right, sweet. All right, all right. Now we're live. All right, cool. Um, all right. So good, good, good. Let's, uh, let's get right to this, man. We're trying to stay focused like uh, my man Jack Trout and Al Reese, R-I-E-S, or Rise, I think as Reese had written about it many, many moons ago about staying focused and influence. Two great books, Influence and Focus. I'm telling you, wonderful books. Uh, if you're trying to uh, market your business, uh, brand awareness, focus, and influence are two of the best books you can possibly find for sure. Um, and that's what we're going to try to do here. We're going to try to do that tonight, shall we? All right. So Kim starts us off. A ton of questions to answer here, too, by the way. I'm looking over here. My other uh, uh, questions have come in fast and furious lately. My website is now back. Yay. All right. So uh, the emails are coming in. It's a, it's an avalanche. 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 Uh, avalanche of uh, stuff, which is good. It's going to keep us occupied for many, many moons. And I'm going to do a video tomorrow. If I get my, why is that not working? Uh, a right capital uh, video for uh, for uh, a guy who uh, um, who who I promised I'd do a financial planning video for. So I'll do a premiere on that. Is that not working? So that'd be good. So stay tuned tomorrow. I'll do a premiere, which means I'll do the video first and I'll put it up there. So that way, if you all watch. Um, I can comment while you guys are watching. I'm not sure why my phone's not charging. All right. So do you know if I can sign up for ACA if you're over 65 years old but eligible for Medicare? My mom is 79, and she thinks she can drop Medicare and sign up for ACA. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, I, I nope, can't do that. Um, I, <laughs> Medicare is the law of the land, and that's what you got to do. Uh, that's for sure. So nope. Sorry, Kim. Uh uh, Al says, pure Michigan, seven inches of snow, no worms or birds. I was listening to a guy today who said it's going to be a great spring uh, for gardening in Texas because of all the snow and the water uh, from the uh, that they had uh, ice, I mean, from they had in the uh, in the the freezing down there. So very interesting. We're going to get a little bit of that today, maybe, too. I do want to talk about wind turbines in Minnesota. I think one of the uh, the people who are leading us down the road of the insanity of agree of unreliable energy. Some of these guys, first of all, they don't know their butt from a hole in the ground. And secondly, they're using the Texas, like they should have win a rise of wind turbines. So we're going to talk about Minnesota say, huh? Interesting. I would think Minnesota would have winterized their wind turbines too. Right. 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 So we're going to get in that too. So, all right. Al says stocks on gold or silver, uh, plant, Plan on to load up some. Just don't know if I should do just do silver. Gold dropping looks attractive. Feel is going past uh, 2,000. Silver history always outpays gold on increases. Uh, I don't even care what the price is. I would get some, um, both for sure. Remember, in this I'm telling you, this, this whole thing with Bitcoin and stuff, it's <laughs> the thing about gold, the thing about silver, the thing about Bitcoin, the thing about anything is how do you slice and dice it? You see what I'm saying? Because ultimately the point about this stuff is where you can trade. Gold has historically been a, and I don't want to say a store of value, but it's been a currency out. Gold has historically been a currency that you could use to transact goods and services. All right, that's just a fact. The problem with gold, if it buy ounces, though, is that how do you, you know, it used to be in the old days under the old uh, Roman Empire, they, they would slice off some of the, was it gold or was it copper? I can't remember. But they had literally slice off some of that and uh, recreate their own. And so it wasn't pure. It's very, very interesting. If you look at the monetary history, I, th I got a book on that someplace. But uh, very interesting what they used to do. Um, you know, they shade off some of that. Uh, but you can't do that. You know, so you're going to have to get uh, pieces of gold that are not just trading in ounces. And I find it interesting. People say, I have all this, you know, gold, you know, these uh, blocks of gold. And I'm like, well, how are you going to, what are you going to do? You're going to take a sledgehammer and uh, that doesn't make any sense. So you want to make sure you got it so it can be traded in cur currencies. And I've talked a bunch of times about getting 10th uh, quarters and, uh, and half ounces, you know, a couple of whole ounces too, for sure, but definitely 10 quarters, half ounces as well. Uh, just be careful on getting the, uh, the tenths. They're very, very light, man. A 10th of, of an ounce is very, very light, easy to misplace for sure. So I'd load up on some silver, you know, what an ounce of silver is turning at 25 bucks now or something like that, 20, I don't know. Um, but I, I really could care less what the price is. I mean, ultimately, you know, I bought my 
first gold price is at 1100 a few five years back or something like that so now it's worth more for sure but I, it literally means not it's like your house man do you really care what your house is worth no you know it's, it's almost like a credit score everyone says i got a good credit score i said are you gonna borrow money no buddy i mean yeah i get it you, you want to you'll keep your eye out but does it matter that much i don't think so so at the end of the day, look, if, if you got some liquid cash and you got some uh, a need for gold as a as a way to store calamity transactions, I, I would highly recommend buying some up. I'm going to buy some here, man, because uh, I, I, you can't look. I'm not going to say you can't go wrong with gold. I, I just historically has always had a value of some sort. Kind of like historically, a shelter always keeps a value. Historically, water. I know water is a public good and all that, but you know, water has a value. Just look what happened in Texas. I think we just need to refocus. What actually can be used to transact business to keep the you know the freaking ship afloat? It's not Bitcoin. It's just not. And I'm not here to bash Bitcoin, but I mean, all these people say it's not Tesla stock. At the end of the day, you need food. You need shelter. And I got a bug right up there. You need water, man. Uh, and ideally heat too. I mean, that's what matters. And so when when the S hits the fan. <laughs> All the Bitcoin in the world doesn't, all the Tesla stock doesn't mean anything, but potentially gold could. So gold is a protection against calamity. So I, I would highly recommend if you have the uh, the resources to, to get some for sure. But just don't buy just nothing but gold ounces. I mean, that's 2000 bucks a transaction. Well, I'll take your freaking bushel of apples. Well, here's an ounce of gold. And that's not a very good trade in my opinion. Um yeah, right on, Ray. Big fan of Rush. Yeah, I was always a big fan of Rush. He's very in, in, uh, important in my life, man, uh, for sure. Let's see here. Um, hold on a sec. Yeah. Yeah, right on. Vinyl, definitely not. A, yeah, right on. 100%. Vinyl is right there for sure. Hello, Nancy. Alive, live. Hey, folks, this is. All right, evening, evening, evening. Hello, laser focus. Uh, greetings from Newton, Kansas. Right on, Scott. Right on. Hello, Marty from Oregon. Jimmy from Georgia. Uh, so, New Jersey Medicare says you can get uh, ACA and get off and get off Medicare. I don't know that to be true, man. Oh, yeah. So. By the way, Kim makes a good point. There's some cloud going around uh, on my channel, apparently on Jazz Wealth's channel too. I know on Grant Stevens' channel, uh, reaching out for WhatsApp or whatever. I don't have any WhatsApp. I don't do WhatsApp. I don't do um, – what was the other one he was doing? I forgot. But I don't – I mean, <laughs> I don't do all of that stuff. And, I, and I, the, the funny thing is some dude – I think maybe Kim, she goes, hey, Josh, you know, freaking Packers or Redskins? Oh, I gotta get banned for saying Redskins. Packers or Redskins, and uh, and the guy says, "Hey, reach out to me at my WhatsApp." And I, oh, that's what it was. some dude had actually reached out to this guy, and uh, and he was some guy said, you know, it was an interesting. He did it on, I forgot what it was. Anyway, Instagram, I think, and I don't have Instagram. And but anyway, it was interesting. So the guy uh, who was a fake guy, the Russian bot, was saying, uh, "Yeah, just send it to you know Joe Schmo, whatever." And, and the guy's like, "Why Joe Schmo?" He goes, "Well, that's my agent. Uh, look, I don't have an agent, nothing like that." So just FYI, if you see comments that say Heritage Wealth Planning WhatsApp, just hit the report thing to stupid YouTube so they can you know ban that guy. Look, they're gonna come back again and again and again. It's not me. For the love of the good Lord, don't send money to WhatsApp. <laughs> please don't. Please don't. Uh, pipelines, pipelines, pipelines. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I have an article on Warren Buffett in the pipelines. That I think you guys will find interesting. We'll see if we get to it today. Hello, Jill. A lot of snow in the Northeast. Yep. Yeah. Silver green play as well. Kim says California. Well, it's going to be, are you, I mean, it wasn't like that in Amarillo, Kim. That's for sure. Hey, James. All right. Uh, Kevin says, why does our government cap how much we can add to our 403b eh, just a law i mean what they don't want to do kevin they don't want to allow um a discriminatory action that doesn't mean on race or anything like that it just means uh they they can't have the rich people taking advantage of the tax deductions you know in such a significant uh, more so than the the poor people if that makes sense so for 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 simplicity they can't say uh, freaking, you know, Joe Biden with his Russian contracts can put a million dollars into his 403B 
where freaking, you know, old Kevin here can only put 10,000 bucks into his 403B. So that'd be discriminatory in favor of the highly compensated uh, Sniffy Joe and his Russian contracts. Um, and they don't want that. So that's why. I mean, it's just it's just government law. I mean, we can go down this. Why does the government do this? Or why does the government do that to the blue in the face? It's, it, there's no right or wrong answer. Uh, highly compensated employees, HCEs, they, they have to be a regulator to some degree of how much more to some extent, no more than a certain amount of how much HCEs, highly compensated employees can put into deferred plans. Uh, I would challenge why you're trying to put a whole lot more into your 403B though. I'm telling you right now, man, I, I'm not sure that's a good idea, brother. So I would challenge you to rethink that for sure. Uh, Vino says you can sometimes buy silver under melt value if you look around. I don't know. have any thoughts on all investor investments, some like Yield Street. I think they're mostly debt vehicle interest payments, but not sure if the return is good for its risk. I don't know the first thing about it. I don't know, man. So I'll, uh, I'll def defer that to you, but uh, that doesn't uh, doesn't sound like anything of interest to me, frankly. Uh, yield investments. Uh, I, I don't know, but I don't know anything about it. And because I don't know anything about it, I, I won't buy it. That's for sure. Uh, what do you tell? Yeah, a good point, Anthony or Anthony Gloria. Why do you? What do you tell people? Who thinks investing in the stock market is the same as gambling? Uh, this that's a great. Uh, this one of my pet peeves. In fact, I uh, um, someone commented that he is a. Uh, he did not like my video on a transaction tax, and I'm all. I got no qualm with the transaction tax, none whatsoever. And he said because he's a day trader and he makes fifty thousand a year day trading stocks. And if they had a transaction tax, he thinks it costs him fifty thousand dollars a year, essentially taking away his whole business. Well, I said that's the difference between investing and gambling. He is or speculating. He's speculating, i.e., gambling, and I am investing. Two different things, and yet we're in the same market. And what happens is the fees of the gamblers go into the fees that the investors play. So why should we subsidize the speculators? It doesn't make sense. And if you're if you're high frequency trading by algorithm or just your own self going in now, you should. It's no. It's one of the. I tell you, one of the most libertarian ideas that there is that the left kind of pr pr promotes uh, in some regard, but they never really. They don't know what they're doing. Is that you pay uh, road fees for how much you drive? All right, that's a great. It's it's a use fee. Uh, so you drive ten thousand miles a day, you pay a higher fee than someone who drives to five miles a day. Uh, also, in auto insurance too, and you know, now they're getting these sticks. And that's going to come more and more. How much you drive, you should pay more in insurance because you are literally more at risk than someone who doesn't drive that much. It's, it's just it's just that simple. Like you're not, it doesn't matter. It's coming on insurance companies, and and I, it's only going to be more efficient pricing. And they're already talking about that because, look, man, at the end of the day, we know what the the cabal of corporatist globalists want. They want you to live closer to the inner city so they can freaking manage your life. They the, the the closer you are, the more they can tell you how to live. That's just a fact. They want you on the stupid uh, rail, all right? Even though it's freaking broke, none of these rails work. None of them are turning a profit. None of them ever will. Completely corrupt. We know what's going on in California. The only good thing Governor Grusom did was stop the freaking high speed train from what I don't know Fresno to San Francisco or so Bakersfield. This freaking thing was stupid. Everybody knows it, but the the Greens love the idea of everybody getting on rail. As it, it's just the whole thing. Is the same. Anyway, so they want you in local areas. They do not want you having a car. They do not want you being on the roads, and they want you to be regulated and living in freaking you know, 1940, 1950s socialist architecture buildings with no, uh, with no sense of soul. Man. You, you see what I'm saying? And they want you all working tech jobs and, and everything is going to be automated. And as such, one of the ways they do that is say, well, if you drive more than Joe Schmo, who happens to live in the inner suburbs or inner cities itself, not the, you know, the gangster bills, but the inner cities, the, the, the city itself, uh, will, you'll, will charge you less of a tax because you're not on the roads. Now, that's going to come in a huge conflict with more and more uh, high-speed internet access to the rural areas because a lot of people say, screw that. I don't even want to live there. I'm going to live remotely, and as such, I don't even need to commute at all. Like, I don't commute at all. My commute is literally from upstairs down here, and I take my kids to school. That's it, man. So if we go to a fee or a usage fee on roads, 
It's uh, it's it's. Uh, I think I got no call on that. Now I know people say, wait a second. I, look, I get it. it's not capital overnight, but the left has been advocating that for a long, long time. And the Republicans should say, yeah, let's do that. But then we're going to get rid of a bunch of other taxes too, which the Republicans won't do because it took until George W. Bush before we got rid of the tax for the Spanish American War from 1896 or whatever the hell it was. Yeah, it's not Spanish. So anyway, at the end of the day, once there's a tax, it'll never go away. But the Republicans should be on that, like, white on rice, advocating, yeah, we're, we're all about that, lefties. We'll, we'll one-up you and say, let's put, propose that, but get rid of everybody else's, I don't know, freaking income tax or gas tax. Get rid of the gas tax. Anyway, point being is uh, the gas tax is a regressive tax. All right, so we know for a fact that the Democrats are like, oh, oh, oh. Oh, and the Republicans say, hey, you want a $15 minimum wage? Let's go 25, baby. Let's raise the price. Why you only want 15? Well, I want to fight for 25. And that's, how, that's how you beat these guys. But the Republicans aren't that bright. Anyway, so, uh, so what's happening is you have, so we are, sub, the people who don't drive much, you know, you can say we're not truly subsidizing the people who do drive a lot because the people who drive a lot pay more of a gas tax. However, we all pay the same income tax and everything. That's in terms of you know percentage wise based on your income. So I don't quite believe that at all. There is something to be said about that. When it comes to uh, uh, transacting, though, and the fees that go with it, um, especially on ETFs and stuff like that, which bleed, uh, leads to long term capital gains being exercised and whatnot, never mind short term capital gains. Facts are we are subsidizing people high, uh, who are trading a lot. That's just fact. It increases fees, man. Uh, it's, a, it's not investing. Investing is you're saying I'm buying a share of said company because I believe that they're going to grow the value of that company over time. That means I think uh, a year from now, two years from now, five from now, the dividends that these guys create, the income they create as from a, a, a pure profit perspective will be more three, five, 10 years from now than it is today. As such, my investment dollar should give me what's called an ROI, return on investment. That's not gambling. That's completely investing. It's no different than going to your local mom and pop shop who's trying to raise funds. Like if you buy a cow, what you do if you buy a cow from a local farmer is you say in a, you're saying in the spring, here, I'm going to pay you 1400 bucks for a half a cow. And that guy's going to take a, he's going to take your money and he's going to freaking put to work to get that puppy grown, ready to go, ready to be butchered. And then he'll turn around and sell it to you at the end of the year. That's investing. That's literally investing because you're expecting a value at the end of the day for it with growth of the transaction. Speculating is a, is a gamble. Hey, hey, boys, hold on just a second. All right. Speculating is not like that. Speculating is just putting on blue or put on black or put on red, whatever it is. You're saying, okay, I might win, I might lose. Gambling, that's gambling. Investing is no. I'm going to be here for the growth of the company. A lot of people do that. I say, man, all right, there's all set. What's up, ladies? You got to make sure people know the difference. People say, Wall Street's a stock. Is a, Wall Street's a gamble. No, it's not. No, it's not. It, there's actually tangible products that you consume every day on that gamble. That doesn't make sense. You're not, you're not freaking buying a... Uh, ear of corn over at your local store. Uh, that's that's a speculation. Not so. Anyway, uh, I'm not a fan of Bitcoin. Not gonna lie to you. I look. I I just I, I, look. People do what they got to do. I don't care. I just I. <laughs> Bitcoin is a, a crypto currency. The currency is being traded, right? But. Currency for goods and services. There's a few goods and services out there, but not much. And so, I, I we sit here today. I just, I don't, I'm just not buying the hype. You know, maybe I'll go down to my doom thinking that I did hear Bill Gates uh, saying uh, cryptocurrency is a uh, is bad or something like that. And I have a, and you know, I posted it on my Wee Wee channel, Me Wee channel, saying, Ah, Bill Gates, maybe this is the reason I get in cryptocurrency. Uh, that's probably reverse psychology. Some guy pointed out because that's I bet that's reverse psychology. Bill Gates. I said, man, that's a good point. I look. I just all right, fine. And, until you can transact with it, um, you know, in terms of buying goods and services, I I just <laughs> how do you slice the dice? I don't know. I don't know anything about. It. I just I don't see the value there. I don't. It's uh, it's it's just interesting to me. We shall see. We shall see. Um, all right. M1 Finance account. Right on, Kim. Uh, Carl, I believe buying bags of junk, silver quarters is a viable option on precious metals. Interesting, Carl. How do you do that exactly? What do you do that? 
Uh, I don't know how you how do you buy junk silver quarters. I'm not sure how you even do that, but that's interesting. Uh, physical gold is something I don't want to store more than a few hundred or thousand around the house. I, I completely agree, uh, Jill. I mean, that's the thing is you don't want your um, you don't want it known. Hey, I got you know thirty thousand dollars of gold ounces. Yeah, well. <laughs> We're trying not to make a target, if that makes sense. Uh, you don't want to make yourself a target. So as such, trust me, I have minimal storage of gold to sell. Let's just put it that way. If, a, if there's a tweaker on here, he would probably say, oh, baby, he's got something. Yeah, that's a nice thing about having dogs. Early warning system. We used to call them the Army uh, early warning systems, and uh, I'm sure they still do. Dogs are that for sure. So dogs will alert you of the early warning of, uh, of an intruder, uh, more so probably than any other thing out there. And remember, most uh, thieves are in for self-preservation. All right, so, you know, they think you might have dogs. They think you might have guns. And yeah, they got bait, break windows and stuff. They're going to go to an easier target. In fact, it's funny. My wife is saying that there are uh, uh, people in my town that were going around cars the other, uh, last night just breaking into ones that were unlocked. And I said, man, it, that brings back memories for me as a, as a high school kid. Doing, I used to do the same thing. Got busted, actually. Um, breaking the cars that were unlocked. And it's just, it's, you know, you, the car locked, you move on. Cars unlocked, you go in. It's just that simple. <laughs> Um, anyway, and uh, it's funny. One of the issues about the key fobs is that you forget that the key fob is in the car. And so you leave it in there. And so all the thief has to do is go in there. The door's unlocked and, you know, tap the freaking brake. And next thing you know, if the key fob is left in there, you're freaking running away with the car. I tell you, I was just reading an article on that the other day. Well, there's more thefts being stolen because key fobs are key fobs are so much easier uh, because people forget about them. There's no dangling key sitting in the ignition, which is interesting. I never thought about it like that. Uh, secondly, a lot of people, uh, no one drives sticks anymore. So because no one knows how to drive a stick, uh, well, young kids, you know, young kids will steal cars because they don't have to worry about driving a stick shit. I was telling my wife, I said, next time we buy a car, we got to buy a stick, man. She goes, no, I don't like driving sticks. I said, man, driving sticks will keep your car. A, it's, it was cheaper. B, will keep your car freaking uh free from you know thieves three is fun to drive it's fun to drive a stick i haven't driven a stick in a long time and i miss him man it's fun all right uh jeremy from maine says he ain't missing his live stream jeremy hasn't gotten refreshed on proper etiquette there's no word as ain't jeremy is isn't i no i am not <laughs> i was getting ready to correct you and i screwed up uh tom says yeah 100%. Uh, my thoughts are that the government likes your tax dollars and doesn't really want to wait any more than they have to. I agree. Yep. Uh, if you're using silver utensils, no one will ever suspect. There you go. Uh, a plot of land where it should basically be self. You know, so, so I'm listening to my man, and a, a lot of people won't like this guy, Owen Benjamin. I actually like him a lot. He cracks me up. Uh, he's a comedian. Uh, but he's very. Uh, What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, he doesn't give a crap. He'll say what as, as interesting as all could be. Yeah, but I was listening to him. He said the exact thing. He talked about Bitcoin. He goes, you know what? You know what has a value, a tangible value? And he was saying this about the U.S. dollar, too. It wasn't just Bitcoin. He was the ability to to freaking uh, my my land in northern Idaho has value. I can plant stuff. You know, I got a wood burning fo uh, fireplace. All the, It's like that has a value. I said, that's so true, man. You know, your Bitcoin, you know, your dollar can transact business. That's a fact. Uh, and, at, you know, at the end of the day, it will probably continue to be able to transact uh, business for a long, long time. But who knows? But um, at the end of the day, that piece of land that you that you can actually make productive has a value that you can. You, I mean, you can't necessarily sell it. It's not liquid. You can't take it to the store. But it, it, it does more than that. It gives you a place to. To grow your own food, to live your life, um, at least in, in, until AOC takes over, you still own it. You know, once the uh, once AOC takes over, you know, we're all kulaks at that point. If you're not familiar with the term kulaks, I highly suggest you read up on your Russian history. Um, but until then, uh, you know, with the, you actually have this piece of land that's yours and you can essentially do what you want. I mean, I know the freaking EPA and the stupid land limits on a. Uh, you got a stream going through your backyard, Josh. You can't put a bridge over that stream. It's a water thing. You're like, huh? But at the end of the day, you can still at least grow a garden in imp unimpeded by regulation for the most part. You see what I'm saying? And you can at least do things. And I, I actually think that's 100%, Jake, is uh, 
uh, a plot of land where you could basically be self-sufficient for sure, man. Detroit's in the house, right on. Um, plastic utensils and uh, paper plates are easy dishwashing. Not, uh, you know, it's funny. We haven't heard much about plastics lately, huh? Uh, plastic straws and plastic uh, packaging and all that is weird. We haven't heard much about plastic and the coronavirus thing. In fact, the main thing, we're packaging more stuff and using plastics all the time. It's almost like, it's almost like, the lefties can't make up their mind what they want to scare us about. It's plastics one day, and then we need more plastics the next day. Crazy, man. Uh, Buffett and Munger hate uh, crypto. Gates wants their money in his foundation. Ah, interesting. Uh, Nanko says she's tired of subsidizing. Every else, everyone else never had kids with paid pro Yeah, well, that's, uh, that, that's the uh, – they'll argue, Nancy, that uh, – the more you pay in, uh, in taxes, property tax and else, the better your school districts are and the less violent crime and stuff there'll be. And there's absolutely no evidence of that at all. None whatsoever. It's actually kind of funny. The better, the more you pay, the more services you get is the argument. It's, it's just, it's, <laughs> you're like looking at Washington, D.C. They have one of the highest per pupil uh, expenditures uh, in, in the country, if not the highest. And I think it was Idaho that had the lowest. And if you look at in terms of just basic test scores and stuff, Idaho smoked Washington, D.C. It's nuts. And I look, I, I find that all that, you know, silly, but I get it. They're saying, look, having, you know, spending per pupil does not make a better school. It certainly doesn't make a more educated kid. In this day and age, hold on just a second. I'm actually questioning uh, whether or not we even – I'm actually questioning a, the, 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 and I got four kids all through public school. So I don't want to say, and was like, oh, you don't know what's like, yeah, I do. Uh, but I'm, I'm questioning if the, uh, the schools, uh, well, I don't question. I'm actually very convinced having your kid in public school is actually uh, bordering on abuse in this day and age for sure. Not all the public schools. Um, you know, there are, there are some that are hanging on there by a thread. Um, <laughs> But the one thing Reagan didn't do, he should have. He should have got rid of the Department of Education. Should have got rid of that, but he did not. And uh, look where you are today. It's it's an evil. It's ugly. It's evil. They are horrific people up there, the DOE, and uh, and their tentacles are getting everywhere. Even you know the 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 most rural part. I was reading today, Fauquier County, Fauquier County in in Virginia, a pretty conservative county. Even they have critical race theory stuff, and just like it, the tentacles go deep, man. Damn, horrible. This, this is horrible stuff, man. Horrible. Robin D'Angelo crap. Of course, she's white. How ironic. Um, and she's making big bucks off of white guilt. White guilt. Look, if you're going to be a white guy guilty, just give your money to black people, at least. Don't give it to freaking Robin D'Angelo. If you're going to be a guilty white guy, just give it to blacks. Just say, first black guy you see, here's some money. Don't give it to freaking Robin D'Angelo. Please, for the love of the good Lord. She's a grifter, man. God. And yet they're doing it so they can get their freaking social credit score and get pats on the back. Actually, funny story. I uh, I got a, a ding on my YouTube channel yesterday. It says, uh, uh, <laughs> it said uh, a person saw one of my videos and, and, and told YouTube it violated his or her privacy. And I said, what video is that? And uh, so I looked, I said, this one? And it was a local wealth, not local, a wealth management firm, which I'll probably not name here, but uh, um that uh, that I said not very diverse, and I show that everybody in their whole staff was white, except for one black guy who's from Africa. And these guys, hey boys, are you coming back in? I said these guys are the biggest hypocrites because I got an argument with a clown, the CEO of this firm, on Facebook a few years back when I used to be part of XY Planning Network, and he was all about you know freaking diversity, you know, women, blacks, minorities, whole thing. I said, oh, and I just said, let me take a look at his board. I said, oh, isn't that interesting? I think it's one lady and all the rest are white guys, white guys. I said, isn't that interesting. So I posted back, said, for all the talk, me, I said, you're big hat, no cattle, because all your talk, I don't see any people in there, any minorities. And I see one woman. I don't even remember if there's a woman or not, actually. I don't think there was. And then he emailed me back kind of sheepishly, yeah, we're going to work on changing that. We're going to work on changing that. But still, it's a good goal. I said, well, yeah, but you're all talk, man, and no action. And so three years later, I said, let's take – this is after the George Floyd thing. I said, let's take a gander because they were all, again, you know, oh, black lives matter, black lives matter. So let's look at these people here. Sure enough, only – not the board, but basically all the management, 
not one black person. I think it was one black lady who was from America and one black guy who's from Africa. I said, man, you guys are freaking clowns, man. And, you know, the vast majority were, were white guys. And I just said, you guys freaking clowns. Just nothing but rich, spoiled white guys who got guilt guilt ridden because they've been born with a silver, speaking of silver, silver spoons in their mouths. It's crazy. And anyway, so I guess they, uh, I, and I looked because I went to the LinkedIn pages. I said, look at all these people posting this stuff like Black Lives Matter, diversity now, ba ba ba. But you looked at their corporate, and I was like, you guys are hypocrites. Nothing, I mean, is there anything worse than white guilt? Uh, the answer, of course, is no. It's embarrassing. Uh, all right. Let's keep going here. Anyway, so I, I emailed back. And I just took the video down. I didn't need YouTube to get on my stuff, so I just said whatever. Um, all right. Yeah, well, I like my video on Coca-Cola, too. Speaking of uh, Robin D'Angelo, did you hear what they're doing now? They're telling their employees that uh, – how to be less white. <laughs> they're using Robin D'Angelo. How to be less white. I was like, what? What is it? Do you guys think that white people are just like, hey, you'll beat us up more? I mean, this is freaking nuts, man. I, I, no one, this is the, I, I don't understand this whole diatribe crap of just screaming oh, freaking bloody murder at anyone who's white. It's nuts. There's a lady from Smith College, Big Lib. Big Lib, who tried to do some rap thing to, I forgot what the hell it was. Uh, she was, uh, whatever. And they said, you shouldn't do that because you're white. And she's like, what? It's a big liberal. Up in Ma I think it's Massachusetts. And she's like, well, I'm just as part of my thing. She goes, no, you're, you're white. You're a cultural appropriation. And then when she goes, I don't, I don't think so. And they basically, they told her to leave. They wanted to fire. And this president, the president of the university at Smith College said, and emailed everybody saying, if she'd have to deal with labor law, she would have fired her for basically wrong thing. This is nuts. It is like she was sitting in this class of, again, more Robin DeAngelo stuff. And she goes right across from me. This is, uh, I was saying I don't feel comfortable talking about racial stuff. And a black guy was banging down the table, rich white women, rich white women. She goes, this is a hostile work environment if there ever was. And, she, and long story short, she quit because she goes, it's literally a hostile work environment. And she goes, these people are coming after me. It's nuts. And she's a you know, single mom with two kids. And I said, well, I hate to say it, but that's the bed you dug, man. Uh, you know, if you voted liberal, uh, well, I, I hate, no, I can't even say that because Republicans have been on this too. But if you've been allowing this stuff in your politics, as Republicans have too, mind you, uh, it's always going to come back and it's going to bite you hard because you have not learned what Bolsheviks do. They eat their own ultimately. And, uh, and, you know, but right now it just seems to be the easy target is white guys. I'm sitting there thinking, so Coke, <laughs> I'm sitting there thinking, what the hell is going on? It's the weirdest thing. It's completely racism gone amok. And I just, do they think that whites are just going to sit there and say, ah, it's no big deal? No, there is, I mean, no one wants to be part of this crap, but you're going to piss people off. Nuts. I don't get it. But we're going to do it in the name of, Racial healing by making you the bad guy. It was nuts. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. But the funny thing is that just, you know, what used to be, you couldn't say anything like five years or now people say, ah, whatever, I don't care anymore. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it's insane, man. It's like, I, you know, the idea, the idea that you're going to, it's just the whole thing's nuts. And, and everybody knows it. It's just very few people. Well, more and more people are getting less afraid to talk about how it, this is pure racism towards white people. Before, if you said anything about white people, you're inherently a freaking Nazi. Now it's like, nah, everyone's starting to see this is nuts. You, you guys are, the pendulum always swings too far. But anyway, going back to Coca-Cola um, and all these corporate companies, you just got to wonder, man. I mean, literally, I sit there and I say, you know, I know they're pushing this stuff just for some reason. I don't know if they're trying to get the DOJ, uh, the, uh, the OCR, Office of Civil Rights. I don't know what's going on, I, I, you know, to get them, leave them at bay. If they're trying to pay off Al Sharpton and those rabble rousers, not to protest in front of their headquarters, I don't know. Uh, but there are people in corporate America who are allowing this racism outright uh, to permeate itself. And at some point, you got to think that can't be good for overall uh, business. It just can't, man. And I actually, I'm, I'm all for it. I like, I like the fact that they're doing this. Um, it does challenge my concern, frankly, about the state of, uh, of the country and how, 
how much faith do I want to put in the capital markets relative to um, knowing I'm still carrying mortgage? I think about this a lot, actually. Um, I, 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 you sit there and you say, okay, we have a history of the capital markets doing quite well, but it's, it's exclusive uh, to the West for the most part. It's exclusive to a few countries in the West. I mean, I, you know, and it's exclusive for a short matter of time over the course of not, you know, not just the Industrial Revolution, but certainly uh, over the course of humanity, if that makes sense. And you're sitting there thinking, how long is, is that, uh, you know, is that a fart in the wind, part of my vulgarness? I don't know how else to put it, though. Or is this something sustainable? And I mean, I don't know. I, I go back to this. I think about it a lot because I'm carrying debt. Now, the first thing I do is not carry debt, but I don't have enough money right now to pay off my debt. And if I did, I, in a way, I wonder, would it not be advisable to say I'm going to pay off my debt because I don't I'm losing my faith in the capital markets, if that makes sense. And I'm not there yet, guys. I'm not sitting there yet. I'm just the reality is when I see corporations who should know better, um, but it started a few, you know, a couple of decades ago. I mean, it did. It started, and it's just, you know, it started in the university, and everyone said, "Oh, no big deal." And Denise D'Souza written a book about that, a liberal education, like in 1995 or 96 or something like that. And I remember reading that, thinking, "This is nuts." There's a guy I got a book on there um, by a guy named Jared Taylor, and he came to George Mason to speak, and he had written a book, uh, the the best of intentions. I forgot what it was called, but he was kind of like a, a Southern historian. Uh, somewhat took a, 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 a lot of people say he's pro-white. I didn't get that impression. I thought he was just, I thought he was, he was radical in terms of the mainstream, but I didn't get the, I mean, he wasn't pro-white like a, it just, it wasn't that bad. I just thought he, it was a different perspective and uh, he would never get a chance to talk today at school. Anyway, a paved with good intentions. That was the name of the book. And he went back to history of just all the, it's crazy. this is back in the late 80s, early 90s, yeah, early, I guess mid 90s. And I remember I went to his thing, says I'm always interested in, uh, in rabble rousing, to be perfectly honest with the people who are on the other side, outside looking in. And uh, and he was able to give a presentation, a pretty well t uh, a turned out presentation too, and uh, you know, with respectable people. But now he came and get freaking Ben Shapiro. And Ben Shapiro, <laughs> he's nothing. You know what I'm saying? It's like crazy. And so, the, the point being is that happened in, in colleges and then it filtered itself down to obviously politics and corporate America and whatnot. You just got to wonder what's the staying power of this. And, and I'm having my doubts. I, I am. And uh, I'm having my doubts because you're hearing story after story after story of people who are in corporate America say, I, I, I can't take this because it's, it's inherently racism. Get, uh, geared towards me. And, uh, and I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not wanted. There's no other way around that. And you just got to wonder what the staying power is. Now, in some way, I'm almost wondering if it's deliberate to get less and less people employed in the U.S. and more employed overseas for cheap labor, if that makes sense. And, and if so, that would be good for corporate profits. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, you're kind of buying the stock to get the corporate profits so they can fire your neighbor. I, I, I don't know. It's a, it's a dilemma. I think about it a lot. And it just seems to me, if you look at the big picture, how can a corporation – run uh, like a freaking well-oiled machine if they're uh, they're having a target on the back of 25 to 40 percent of the employees and they can't speak up uh, how can that possibly happen how can we have any kind of dialogue in society about uh, about moving the ball forward and any kind of product or service if for you to mention anything you're gonna say oh that's just coming from white privilege or something like that I mean that at that point the debate is over I mean, I'm not talking. The minute someone uses that, I'm, I'm done. I, I, so I don't know. And if you can't do that, how does the corporation, ultimately the country, function? And I don't know. And that's my concern. And again, I, uh, you know, I am a, a, a man of, uh, I believe in Jesus without, without question. And, uh, and Jesus did not promise us freaking gold and, you know, milk and honey in the U.S. Uh, or on, in this world. He certainly did not. <laughs> His disciples certainly weren't rewarded in this natural realm with uh, gold, milk, and honey. That's her dog on shore. So if you're a follower of Jesus, you got to say to yourself, at the end of the day, uh, uh, <laughs> you, you follow Jesus at the risk, if that makes sense. And you're sitting there thinking, okay, 
Do I put my faith in something that has only been relatively new and really only took off, really only took off in the latter part of the 1970s? And people will say it's because Reagan. I actually give Jimmy Carter and Jimmy Carter and Ted Kennedy credit for a lot of the deregulation that happened at the late 70s, man. Got deregulated the stock and stock, bro, uh, stock trades. Charles Schwab would not deregulated the um, the airplane industry. Deregulated the uh, the trucking industry. If memory serves, yeah, uh, de- it was definitely the airline. They de- but they deregulated a bunch of things, man. Uh, Carter did, um, and I I don't think he gets enough credit for that. And I, look, I don't like Carter. He's an anti semite, but I don't like him. But at the end of the day, there was some stuff, and that then Reagan came in and brought some of this Wall Street. Uh, you know, leveraged buyouts, things of this nature, that stuff like that was never before. And then, you know, you got Clinton and Tony Blair, the third way in the UK was Tony Blair, Clinton here. So you had the deregulation under the late Carter, latter part of Carter's term, Reagan for sure. Uh, then you had the, the great war machine under George W. Bush, uh, George H.W. Bush, Clinton, not so much, but a little bit, but not as much. Certainly going to George W. Bush and Barack Obama. And that helped a lot of uh, corporate, you know, because there's a huge money to be made to sell your products and services to DOD because there's just tons of money. Uh, on top of that, then you had, uh, you know, the deregulation, uh, the Graham, the uh, Glass-Steagall bill, Steagall bill. That was, and I was all for that. And in hindsight, that was a mistake. They should not have done that. That's for sure. And so you see the deregulation of some of these things to allow these hedge fund managers and things like that to, to really make bank. And now these hedge fund managers control a lot of voting shares of these corporations. And a lot of these hedge fund managers are big lefties. And then you look at Vanguard, BlackRock control, I mean, almost like half the voting interest of the stock market, something like that. It's insane about BlackRock and Vanguard. And, and if you, the last time I looked at Black, BlackRock's webpage, the front page, all about green energy stuff. And it's just, so you got to wonder, where is this, this, we're, I don't know. It just seems to me this is this isn't running on solid ground. That there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of sand, uh, a lot of castles being built on sand. And if so, what does that mean? I don't know, man. But this is something I think about all the time. So if we have a big calamity, one thing that you'll be glad you don't participate in is the debt market that you pay off your debts. Whoa! Hey, you oh, come here. So one thing you should do to keep yourself sane is get down. All right. Uh, Florida says, come here. Oh, boy. Don't, why, why are you always barking at Pablo? All right. So frugal X mana Right on, man. Uh, with the Fed spending soon, does it calculate avoid inflation? What does that mean? Oh, come on. Let's go. Everybody out. Everybody out. Go. Bye-bye. Everybody go. Everybody. What's that? Yeah, thanks, buddy. There you go. That's good. There you go. Everybody out. Thanks. Yep. There we go. Uh, right here. So, uh, yeah, I, I, the inflation is in the asset price is uh, frugal. Ex Mena. What part of Maine are you from? Um, the asset price is for sure. You know, uh, stocks, bonds, houses. That, that's a fact. Um, there hasn't been, I, I, I did a video not too long ago on looking at the inflation of, of everything that's consistent with, uh, not the CPI, but just the, the day-to-day stuff. Um, it, it, you just have to look at the broad term. So some things are inflated, some things are not. And, uh, it's just, it's just that simple. And Mel, do I, I don't think I have it on this, nah, shoot, it's on my other website, other, my other computer. Um, but it's actually quite amazing when you look at the actual numbers, like, oh, that's not nearly what people were saying it would be uh, going back to the 1980s because we've had debts. I mean, hell, we've had debts as far as the eye can see going back to 19 during FDR. And we've never paid off the government debt. We never will. Um, I, I heard that of of all the dollars ever printed, uh, like 40 percent were done last year. I, you know, I don't know that to be true. I haven't validated, haven't fact checked it. But that's what I heard. I said, man. <laughs> Of all the dollars ever printed, 40% were done in 2020. <laughs> so the inflation is in, is in assets. So it's not necessarily in, in uh, goods and services yet. Now, certainly in some services, your trades, you get a new roof on your home. I tell you right now, man, that's going to cost a pretty penny to do that. You know, get uh, just lots of things that are going to be inflated in terms of labor. 
And it's only going to get worse if we have a $15 minimum wage, that's for sure. Uh, but in terms of just a broad-based inflation, I'm just, I just am not worried about it. I mean, I, as we sit here today, just going back to his uh, thing, I, I, I still want to know how people say Japan. I, how do you make that argument with J that Japan has a GDP, debt to GDP, at 250%? And they've had it like that for years, man. So how do you make the argument with all the printing that inherently leads to inflation when Japan is as well before us and doing this? And there is none. I, I don't know how you make the argument. I don't. Uh, the stimulus isn't going to be inflationary. Just, I'm not worried about that in the least, actually. A stupid stimulus. Uh, the, that money, we know it. I did another video on this where that money's going. It's going to pay down debt or going into savings because it's a short-term thing. Now, if they were to make, if, I mean, here, here's the issue. A, a one-time stimulus does not create inflation. It's just silly. What happens is if you want inflation in that regard is you say, we're going to do an Andrew Yang thing. We're going to give you 3000 bucks a month. That will create inflation, guaranteed, because it's uh, steady. It's perpetual. A one-time shot in the arm does not create. No one's going out there. I mean, some people, but the vast majority of people are not going out there and buying uh, goods, you know, buying stuff with a one-time shot in the arm and say, no, I'm paying down debt, which means I've already stimulated the economy with debt spending. So now I'm paying down debt. Theoretically, I might go back and buy something else again, probably, but it won't happen overnight. And the reason people are paying down debt is because they're worried about the debt they've accumulated, if that makes sense. So what happens here is you have a one-time shot in the arm. Some people will use it for a TV. I get that, 100%. Some people will use it for, I don't know, whatever. But at the end of the day, they did a study. They said that most people are using it to pay down debt or put into savings uh, for, you know, in terms of if, they, if this happens again, i.e., if we cannot get by six months from now, how do we put foot, freaking food on the table and pay our electric bill? And so a lot of people rightly were put in the bank as opposed to consuming it on expenditures. Or they're paying back this what they've already used to stimulate the economy, which is debt. And so... The stimulus is stupid. If they want inflation, they got to give a UBI. And I look, I, 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 I would be all for, all for getting rid of a UBI, starting a UBI if we got rid of all of the welfare stuff. 100%. I think it would be great. You know, Nixon, I, I was reading a conservative guy today or yesterday talking about Nixon, the best president in history. I said, you cannot be conservative and argue that Nixon was the best president in history, but he claims to be a conservative. That's freaking nuts. Anyway, so, but the point being, Nixon, wanted a essentially a UBI back in the 70s, maybe in 1968 or 69. Um, that, was, well, that was pretty much well before all the crap we got now. You see what I'm saying? So if you want to say, look, we're going to just say, here, Grandma Jones, here's 2000 bucks a month. Go crazy. She'll still get her Social Security. She'll still get a Medicare. But we'll be no more freaking Section 8, no more EBT cars, no more this, no more, no more WIC, no more all that. Done, done. Get rid of it all. I, dude, I'm 100% to talk about efficient. Just make a voucher program? Absolutely. Um, I'm all about that. So I'm not worried about inflation. I'm not. And people say, have you seen what the price of a new diesel truck is? All right. Well, you, are you buying a new diesel truck? How many people are? I'm not. Are you? I mean, if you are, that means it sucks. Yeah, that's an asset. But, the, but don't forget, going back to, by the way, uh, going back to solar uh, photovoltaic versus reliable energy, Just this is going to go back going uh, believe it or not this is a good segue all right so everyone, uh, electric vehicles uh powered by solar panels for instance or, or even by wind is stupid so if you go back to everyone says you're like in the horse and buggy all right what did a horse and buggy do how far could you go how much did it cost how many people could you transport what was could you do in the mud in the snow i mean think about it so the horse and buggy to upgrade to the Ford Model T was a factor of, in terms of upgrade, I don't know, freaking a thousand million times. All right. That's the difference between going from what we have now, reliable energy with a freaking gas tank that can go a long way, that has tons of gas stations all over the place, that is reliable as all can be, all right, versus an electric vehicle that doesn't give me any kind of upgrade like that. That's just all there is to it. That also needs to be charged. The charging is takes a hell of a lot longer than it does just to fill up a tank. That, the list goes on and on and on. The electrical vehicle, the EVs do not have the same upside as a Model T did with a horse and buggy. And so I hear, I get it on my channel all the time. You're like a Luddite going back to horse and buggy. Okay, so horse and buggy to Model T. Compl higher, more range, 
more reliability. It could it just could take more people. It just didn't have to feed it, the whole thing. That is a big jump. Actually, you can make an argument going from an ICE, internal combustion engine, to a, an electric vehicle is actually going back. People aren't inclined to go backwards, man. They go forward. They're willing to pay the price. They're not going backwards. Now, you can make the argument, but we're going to save the environment. No one believes that, dude. They just don't. No one believes that crap. You can make the argument that uh, it's funner to drive. Okay, I get it, man. It's an uh, electric vehicle. It can go off zero to 60 a hell of a lot quicker than an ICA. That's fun. I get it. It's quieter. I get all that. No one's going to pay a pre premium unless they got this crazy money for that. The vast majority of people just are not going to do that. It's just not going to happen. And so all these people comparing horse and buggies to, you know, you want to go back. just the whole, I just dealing with greens. Like I said, in my comment community section on my channel, it's like arguing with my children, man. Well, my children are 10 years younger than they are today, but dad, why? Uh, because I said, but dad, everybody else is doing this. Yeah. And everybody else's mom is frigging, you know, drunk as a skunk with a monk. And, and she doesn't know that you're walking out of the street at three o'clock in the morning. You're not doing it. But dad, why? It's like, I'm like, holy crap. There's no logic to these people, man. It's nuts. Um, yeah, exactly. The leaks. That's the thing, man. Everyone in DC hates us. Everyone does. It's not Trump. It's you. It's you. Uh, you'll, truly, Jeremy, you'll never understand what the Roth is maxed out at 6000 a year. <laughs> uh, really? <laughs> Do you not see the tax bomb that is in your IRA? Someone should write a, 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 a book about that. The tax bomb that is in your IRA that affects everything else downstream that you do not know about until you came across your old buddy Josh. Uh Tom says, I was watching a video on someone drilling a well. I was surprised how much power the well pump takes to bring water up. They try to use a small water online and no work. Yeah, I mean, that's a, a 5,000. They tried using a 5,000 watt. Uh, I'm not sure what that means. A 5,000 watt online and like a pump. Uh, it, uh, I'm not sure what Tom's saying there. But uh, yeah, you need electricity for pumps. Uh, it's shocking. And if you're doing a well and that sucker goes, what, 300 feet down? Oof. That's why, by the way, there'll never be hydro, massive amounts of hydro. Uh, you, you know, to, to get the hydro up so you can get the head for it to drop to turn the turbine. <sighs> but this is why public schools, they like it. They like feeding ignorance. You should see the crap my kids come home with, man. It's nuts. Uh, thankfully, um, you can hear old Pop or Finney there. Thankfully, uh, my kids, my daughters are more inclined uh, to, to, to challenge um, me. But they also, but they're open-minded. So that's good. Uh, my boy's a little bit younger. My Kevin, he's like, I, I literally, he doesn't care. He's like, whatever. Uh, Liam is like, yeah, he's he, he always looks for the, what are they trying to, you know, and, and insinuate here what is, is very very interesting and uh, so we have discussions on that chloe um i'm just trying to teach her critical thinking so she came in the other day saying how you know sea world was doing all this bad stuff they had to watch a video on that and all that and i said okay let's look up let's just see if there's a, a an alternative explanation to all this horrific accusations of sea world and lo and behold there was a lot of the crap is just literally fake. It's like Michael Moore and Roger and me. It's completely fake, man. Fake stuff. And yet they're putting that stuff for your kids to see. And so I told her, I said, look, Chloe, I'm not telling you that some of the stuff they're saying is, is, all, is not right. I'm saying there's always a different side of view, a different point of view. Always. Even when I say something, man, always a different point of view. And you always got to see what the other point of view is before you make a decision. And the way you know that you're probably getting closer to the truth is a more erratic and hostile uh, the people who are advocating a certain point of view are are getting more and more the more you question them. Uh, the vaccine stuff, I'm telling you right now, everyone says you're, you're anti-vax. No, not in the least. I am interested as to what is happening with the health of our children today with diseases and allergies and things of that nature. I have no clue, but we have we have a significant rise in the number of vaccines that are given to children. And we have a significant rise in the number of health issues with children. That's just fact. Is there a correlation there? I don't know. I have no idea. I mean, is there a correlation? Is there a causation there? I don't know. I'm curious. And the minute you start saying, is there something here? People scream bloody murder at you. I'm like, if you're seeking the truth, why would you not be open to all dialogues? Because they don't. They don't see the truth. 
And so he said, okay, well, show me the proof that says the level of uh, shots that children get uh, from the CDC recommended list is safe, that there's no side effects. And I'm not just talking about autism. I'm just talking about where is it? And, and there isn't any. They, they come up with a couple of things. They're like, have you actually read this? Because if you actually dive into it, it doesn't say what you think it does. Now, the headline says it, but it doesn't. Now, again, does that mean vaccines don't work? No, I have no idea. But I'm interested, and if we're going to be mandating stuff into my kids, yeah, I want to know if it's if it's legit. Uh, global warming. I had a guy I subscribed to his email thing, and I like him. He said, uh, "Talk about Ben. Look, I'm not the biggest fan of Ben Shapiro. He, he never did much to me. I, I don't get the whole. It's just. I, I mean, look, I got a problem with him, but I never thought he was like, oh my goodness, Ben Shapiro. I, I never. Uh, whatever. Anyway, uh, he was you know bagging on Ben Shapiro, saying he doesn't know a thing about climate change so why don't you just shut your pie hole and i said dude I, I, he's like climate change is not a hoax ben i said no one says climate change is a hoax fool and i just said this is weird I, like i said the more hostile people get because they're trying to defend their argument the more you know they don't know what they're talking about we're going back to christianity the older christianity when i was growing up oh you know if you commit a hundred sins you're going to hell you're like where where does it say that it says it in the Bible. And you're like, oh, I'd like to see it. It's in there. And you know, it turns out it's not in there. And you're like, why are you being so hostile? I just, I just want to see the evidence. There is. Oh. That's how you know that their other side is built on thin ice when they start screaming bloody murder at you. Now, when people start looking for the truth, they say, I'm just interested. I'd like to see. And people start saying, hey, check this out. Now, you might not agree with this or that. That A means they've read the damn thing, pardon my French. But B, it also means that they're open to a dialogue. I tell you, it's the vaccine people, it's the uh, the global warming people, now it's the COVID people. Those are the big three. You're like, this is nuts. It's it's a weird, it's a religion. No other way around that. It's a religion for people that, it's, it's weird. It's actually quite frightening. Uh, all right, Jan says, should we do reverse mortgage, even if we don't need it? Um, I like reverse mortgages. I like reverse mortgages and I will get one as long as I'm ready to stay at that house and call it a career. So when I hit 62, I will get a reverse mortgage line of credit. If Jan, that's the place, uh, the ball and chain and I agree. That's where we'll uh, stay our last years. Cause remember a reverse mortgage line of credit grows. It grows and it grows at a decent clip too. And I, I've taught me, I can't remember what it is, but it does grow even if you don't use it. And that is money that comes out tax-free, that you can use tax-free. I'm just telling you. And so the issue on reverse mortgage that I think a lot of people overlook is the fees that it costs are based on the fair market value of your home. Not the, the line amount, but the fair market value. All right. So just for simplicity, if you have a $100,000 house today, all right, and you take for simplicity a $50,000 line of credit, on a reverse mortgage, all right? You're gonna pay the fee, I think it's 2% of the 100,000 bucks, as there's more to it than that, but I'm just, for uh, the uh, the home and the insurance cost to the Ginnie Mae, or is it to uh, FEHA? I think it's the insurance to FHA. It's 2% of the fair market value to, I think it's FHA, who does the, who, who backs them. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. If my man Sergio's on here, he can correct me too. But at the end of the day, what happens, the fee is based on the fair market value of your home when you take out the, the reverse mortgage, even if you don't draw against it. So if I have a $100,000 house today and I take reverse mortgage out, I'm going to pay 2%. That, that's just one part of the fee uh, for the insurance that I got to pay the FHA. All right. Now that $50,000 line of credit is growing at a clip of whatever the, the established interest rate is when we took out the debt. So, but so okay, so say, I don't want that. I'm going to wait. So now I'm going to take out the loan in, in when I'm in 10 years. Now my $100,000 house is worth 200000 bucks. All right, my fee is still 2%. It might be more at that point simply because more and more people are going to do this service. So that's $4,000. I know for a fact that if my fair market value has doubled, the, 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 the home insurance amount, the insurance amount to the mortgage insurance amount to the FHA has doubled as well. So in some way to take it out early, you're getting your, your line of credit to grow at an earlier rate, which means it's, and it's I think if memory service is compounding as well. So that's a good, that's, that's a good way to build potential assets for which you can draw down, but you're also paying the limit, the less amount of your, uh, of your fee because your fair market value most likely will grow as your house uh, fair market value increases. 
Hope that makes sense. So if you like your home and you're expecting to stay in there and you don't need it, yeah, I'll do it. Remember, you got to be 62. Uh, well, I mean, the, one of the homeowners has to be 62. That's a fact. So just keep that in mind. Yeah, everybody and their mom's talking about uh, ARC. I, I, I just, I frankly don't care. I, uh, I shudder. At uh, every three years, we have a new Kathy Woods out there, and I, uh, and you know, it doesn't help her that she's an attractive lady. I'll tell you right now. I mean, you know, she looks pretty, and you got a pretty lady out there who's a woman in the industry. She has returns to boot. I mean, it's a, it's a great story. You got a lady, she looks good, and she's got great returns. I got no quality. I just, I wouldn't. Uh, I'm not touching it. Now, if you want to throw some, you know, some bones out there, I think we had a guy on the YouTube channel say he threw, you know, twenty thousand bucks at her or something like that. More power. To you. The drawback, too, is don't forget, is the bigger asset base you get, the harder it is to find those perfect stocks. Uh, this is why Vanguard is so good at what they do um, on their active management funds. They close the funds out to new investors because the bigger their asset base gets, the more money they have to use to buy stocks that are kind of second and third tier. And they don't really want to do that. You know, if you want to be a good active managed fund, you really got to be concentrated and just pick your top stocks, man. And that might mean you could get smoked too, but the bigger you get, the more of a closet indexer you become. And uh, if you're charging a pretty significant fee, uh, closet indexing is, is, is the absolute worst way to invest. Um, a, a fund with lots of assets, they have to spread those assets among many different stocks. They can't help but become a closet index and that fee doesn't justify it. You know? So just be careful there. Hey, Mary. Uh, they want, uh, uh, Dan, government doesn't want me getting a sweet pre tax or 20 degrees, a lot of snow in central mass. Well, it is winter time. Uh, if you want pipelines, don't buy um, uh, mass limited partnerships by C corps. All right. Larry says my stress test is hundred percent for all. Ca yeah. It's always that way. So remember Larry. So on right capital, uh, this is a good question. Uh, so Larry's looking at his right cap. He goes, man, my stress test is saying I'm 100% for everything except combined. Uh, so combined is literally all those things thrown together, if that makes sense. And uh, this is one thing I say to people. Um, if, if we're going to have a 20% market crash, we're going to have an increase in inflation by 1%. Social security falls by 20%. Uh, taxes go up by 20%. Healthcare goes up by 20%. Whatever you choose in there. Um, two of those things are almost mutually exclusive. Uh, 1%, a 1% increase in inflation over what I'm already using, which is two, uh, social security won't be reduced in that regard because uh, there is cost of living adjustments, if that makes sense. So I don't want to say it's mutually exclusive, that they both can't exist, but pretty much if we have a pretty significant increase in inflation, your social security will increase in inflation with inflation as well. Your COLAs will for sure. Um, but yeah, in theory, if all those things happen, uh, you know, healthcare goes up, taxes go up, inflation goes up, uh, market correction, all that stuff. Yeah. I mean, you could be in a world of hurt, no doubt. And that means tighten the belt, tighten the belt. Is that likely to happen? No, it's not. But, you know, again, we, this is where you just got to be fluid and nimble. I wouldn't look at this every day. I'll tell you that right now because it changes literally with you will have a different Monte Carlo. Um, and let, if you had 100%, maybe not. But if you're like 90, oh, hell, even 80%, and the market goes down 10%, your Monte Carlo will show less than 80%. Every day it changes based on what your portfolio has done for the day, if that makes sense. Which is why it's good to link your accounts, by the way. Uh, it, because if you're linking your accounts, it keeps it up to date. And it's, Vanguard is somewhat problematic. The, the, their multi-authentication uh, makes it a little bit difficult, but it still works. I know for a fact, every now and again, you got to get off and get back on. But uh, but if you're linking your accounts, it updates. It. And it'll, it'll, your your financial planning numbers will be real, real time. Uh, some liberals are targeting me. I think you're probably right. Uh, hey, right on, James. Watch those pops. Hello, Mr. Palace. Right on. What's going on in Greece? I think uh, James is third generation. Is a third generation? So granddad first, right? Mr. James' is dad, second, and James third, right? So I'm second generation. Oh, my my dad's dad is Irish. Is that me me third generation? Is my dad's dad Irish? I can't remember. I think he was. Or was I can't I, no man, I don't know. Uh 
<laughs> what's my WhatsApp at handle? Right on, man. Uh, there's a big imper on the Money Guy show. Watch out for him, too. What's an imper? Vacationing in Tucson. Right on. Yep, land is important, especially land with a year-round river, pond, deep well. Can I agree more? All right. Uh, do your research and make your test cases fall. I, I agree with that. I mean, look, I mean, I, this is where I vastly. At the end of the day, you cannot argue with what the S&P 500 has done, not just in 50 years, since 1871. Now, you can argue, well, did anyone really own the S&P 500? No, 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 no. But... What I'm saying is you know, the capital markets have been a wonderful, wonderful mechanism to make middle class people upper middle class, to make lower income people middle income people and such and such. It really has done remarkable things. It made lower income people wealthy beyond their wildest dreams. The Microsoft uh, sec the millionaire secretary, of Mi the Microsoft millionaires, that's what they used to call them. The secretary of Microsoft with stock options would become a millionaire. So I, uh, I, I, at the end, of, like I'm not. I, I just wonder. I just sit there and say, you know, we got we are printing money like crazy. Uh, we had a higher um, first time on uh, jobs uh, file uh, unemployment claims again. You know, still in the low nine hundreds or high eight hundred thousands. First time job job uh, unemployment claims. I, this none of this is looking. I I just it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Um, and, and at some point, if it doesn't make sense. You can say, well, it's different now. Well, we've heard that a million times on Sunday, folks. It's, it's different today. It's always different. But I, it's, I tell you, at the end of the day, I still wonder. And I, it's, you know, big corporations are all about a minimum wage of 15 bucks. We know that. Why? Because they know they won't have to hire that many people. And they know they can automate some of the lower entry jobs. I, I'm just, this isn't freaking rocket science. And it'll save them a hell of a lot of money. They're willing to pay significant money up front for AI and robots, uh, knowing there's no sick leave, knowing that there's bad, no freaking you know, coronavirus, knowing that this and that, just knowing there's no health care insurance they have to pay for. Um, you know, knowing there's no cocaine being sold and all that. I mean, just, they know this, man. And as such, they're willing to take the upfront hit not to have uh, labor. I, just you can't blame them. Hell, they're getting freaking robots that can pick your food out there in your, your uh, strawberry fields. I mean, that's going to be a boon. That's not inflationary, by the way. It's not. It's just not. But if you're a corporation, a big corporation, you can afford that. You're like, man, I'll spend, I'll go to the capital markets. I'll raise money. I'll spend buku money getting these robots. That's what capital markets, i.e. investing, are good for. It's not speculated, but what what is you know Joe Pock? Oh, Joe Pa, remember Joe Pa, Joe Mama Job, uh, Mom and Pop. What do they do? They don't have that kind of money. They still got to pay freaking Alexander Ocasio Cortez to to wait tables and stuff like that. You see what I'm saying? It's like it's just it's such a freaking scam. Everybody knows it, except it's, uh, everybody knows it. And uh, so what happens here is you're going to have more and more big corporations, few and fewer mom and pop shops. And uh, it's like the coronavirus has allowed us to, to get comfortable shopping online. Um, and what does that do? Now, here's the interesting thing is mom and pop shops can still thrive on Amazon. One of the things I don't like when people get all mad at Amazon Look, I look, I get it, man. But at the end of the day, Amazon has been good for me. I sell books on Amazon. Um, you know, I don't like that. If you have a rebel flag, we're going to ban you. That's freaking stupid, man. But by and large, that's they're not doing that all that much. Will they do it? Probably. But as we see here today, Amazon has been good. Uh, eBay has been good. I, I don't use Etsy. A lot of these places have been quite good for, for local uh, producers. That, that's just a fact. So I'm, I'm, I'm keen on it. I just at the end of the day, though, you know for a fact your local bomb and pop retail shop <sighs> – I don't know. I don't know how it's going to survive. And a $15 minimum wage thrown on top of that, never mind all the other regulations that go in it. I, I just, I don't know how it's going to survive. And and so where do those people go to for work? You know, I mean, because not just the owners of these companies, but the employees, you know, the freaking, a lot of times you get your kids working for you. A lot of times you get the, the local high school kid coming in, bagging groceries and stuff. Where are those people going to work? And, uh, you know, they can all start their own Etsy shop. I hope so. I just don't think that's that's feasible. But hopefully they do. 
And so you're going to get a UBI uh, to make up the difference. I get, that's what's happening. And I, I you just got to wonder, well, how does this, what does this do? This isn't inflationary. None of this is inflationary. It's just not. So what does this do now, by the way? Well, it creates this, a society that says, you know, we're going to have, uh, it's, it's fascism. And when I say fascism, it's not jackbooted brown shirts. It's big government dictating to big corporate corporations how to run their business. But they'll let big corporations keep the, pro the, the profits. And they'll socialize the risk and they'll privatize the profits. As long as those profits get funneled back to the big government through campaign contributions and stuff. It's a freaking great scheme. But is that good for the overall economy? I don't know. Is that good for overall entrepreneurship? Maybe. That's interesting. Maybe. I, I don't know. I don't know where that leads, but it's just, it's, uh, it's, it's coming, man. It's coming fast and furious. And I just to sit there and think just because the S&P 500 of the last, you know, I literally going back to 1870s have done so well, it will continue on. And I just like, well, that hasn't happened in every other country. A very few have done like we have. Are we the divine exception? Or have we already, you know, kind of, you know, freaking peed in the wind uh, too much? And now it's coming back on us because we've lived so large and we've not allowed. Uh, we just got too fat and happy. And I, look, I'm not trying to be negative. This I'm just literally, you know, stream of consciousness here, what I think about. I don't know. I just know that at the end of the day, the one thing that would make me happier is not having any debt, if that makes sense. No debt gives you a lot more choices, man. All there is to it. So, uh Yeah, I don't. I'm not a big fan of gold and silver funds. I think if you're gonna, I mean, that's just stocks, Joe. Um, you, that's not, that's not the hard, the hard asset. If you're gonna buy gold and silver, damn, buy the gold, the hard asset. And, and by the way, uh, gold and silver stocks will be in VTI uh, or the C fund. Maybe not the C fund, maybe, but certainly the total stock index. So, um, yeah, I, I'm not, uh, I'm not a big fan of uh, gold and silver stocks, not the least. All right. Let's see. All right. All right. Uh, someday traders are very skilled and can make money consistently. Um, do I, what is the difference between an HSA and an FSA? So a flexible savings account is use it or lose it, James. You, you have to use it every year. If you don't, it's a kaput, it's gone. So HSA is, uh, is, is, is completely different, actually. So FSA, you can use like contact solution. I remember using that. You can use, I think, I'm sure you can use it prescription drugs and whatnot. But if you don't use it, it is gone. So HSA is usually preferable for sure. Yeah, most days, uh, most day traders eventually lose completely agree. Um, I have done a video of Chicken Charlie on option trading on uh, in order to generate income. And the video is called How I Got Skunked or How I Got Smoked in Options. Uh, <laughs> or maybe how I, got, how I Got Killed Selling Covered Calls, I think. Let me see. But I did do a video on that. And, uh, and I sold covered calls like the, with the best of them until I got killed, which uh, – which is why you don't listen to which is people say, what's your investment recommendation? So, man, if you knew my track record on investments, you would stay far away from me, man, because my track record sucks. Uh, I can't. Anyways, uh, how I got killed and covered calls. If someone wants to look at my channel, you can find it. But it's a good video. Um, last year, RMD is not required. Do you know if that might be happening again for 2021? Yeah, I don't know. Good, great question, Sharon. Anyone know? RMD is going to be unlikely, says Vinyl. Um, until we get a, uh, until we get some legislation being voted on, I, I, I don't even really, and it's, um, like for instance, uh, Devin Carroll did a video on uh, flat social security. Everybody gets the same I, I, until something like that is even, even remotely coming down the pike in legislation. I, I just think it's a waste of time to concern, to concern yourself with it for sure. Look, remember Congress doesn't actually write legislation. Is written by special interests, all right? So, I mean, even the, the Trump tax bill, I mean, all this stuff is written by special interests. They hand it to the friggin', you know, the chairman of the House Ways and Means. It goes through committee. It gets passed by the House. So it goes through the Senate. It passes, goes through committee, all this stuff. No, there's no congressman, AOC or MGT or MTG. Marjorie Taylor Green Is it Marjorie Taylor Green or Marjorie Green Taylor? I think it's MTG. 
So from AOC, uh, crazy one, to MTG, who I like. Oh, you like her? Yeah, I, I like anyone who stands against a DC mob, and she does. So I like it, absolutely. Anyway, anyone, and she's, she's local, by the way, which is cool. So anyone who, uh, um, no one writes these bills. They're just told what to write by their, their special interest groups. It's just all there is to it. So to speculate without actually seeing any verbiage, it's, it's just a waste of time. So don't, don't worry about it. I would imagine RMDs would probably, you know, I don't even know. I'm not going to say, I have no clue. I have no idea what they're thinking. Uh, yeah, there you go. So with COVID, I've been driving about 100 miles a month compared to 1,200 miles a month before. Yeah. Uh, Roth is the best investment vehicle. Uh, yeah, I, I completely agree without question. Uh, Kim says, I think uh, President Biden has backed down on student loan debt and says all kids need to go back to school. Well, it's not him. I mean, he's he's completely gone. Whoever his uh, handlers are. Remember, Valerie Jarrett was uh, was Obama. Obama's just a mouthpiece. Uh, I don't even know who Biden's puppet master is. It's uh, I mean, certainly not Jill. I mean, she's about as smart as a rock. Um you know, I give it to Valerie Jarrett. She was good. She was effective. Uh, I give it to Michelle Obama. A lot of people are, are anti-Michelle. I, I thought she was effective, man. I mean, look, I don't think she's all that bright, but I think from a political perspective, uh, she was good. She knew how to rabble rouse when it needed to be rabble rouse and knew how to back off when it didn't. And uh, now they set the dialogue back a long ways to those guys for sure. Uh, but you know, from a, from a perspective of riling up your base, I thought both, you know, both those guys are quite effective. You know, Valerie Jarrett was a brain spy in the operation. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Axelrod. Um, you know, he had devil Patrick's Deval Patrick's, ca uh, governor campaign in Massachusetts, the first black governor in Massachusetts. And, uh, you know, that was the, uh, the minor leagues for, uh, for Obama and it worked. Because all the white guilt out there, so many white guys, I'm going to vote for Deval Patrick to show that I'm not racist. It's like it never works, man. You can never prove a negative, folks. Stop with this stuff. You cannot prove you're not something. You can only prove you are something. And if how do you prove that you are a good human being? Well, it's by being a good human being. But Josh, you say some things that are, you know, I, look, I get it. I try. I see some idiots on there, and I just, oh. I try my best, believe it or not, to bite my tongue, but sometimes I'm just like, do like a guy today, what do you say on my YouTube channel? I, and I always say when I say something, I say, man, uh, I know Jesus. Like, dude, that doesn't advance the cause. I know he's sitting up there saying that. And I was like, I know, but it makes me feel better, Jesus. And I know Jesus like, well, you'll feel, you won't feel great when you're in front of me and I hold you accountable for these things you're doing on my behalf. And it's not like, in Jesus' name, I don't, I'm not like that, but. If you're holding yourself out as a man who loves Jesus, and remember, if loving the Lord is wrong, I don't want to be right. Uh, you, you really need to disengage from uh, lunacy arguments because the, the people who are you're engaging uh, are lunatics, which means inherently you're going to be a lunatic. Don't be a lunatic. But it feels better sometimes when people say stupid stuff. I was, oh, this is what the guy says. So I post up a bit of my channel and said, huh? I said, Texas, huh? And I said how the, uh, the windmills... Uh, were frozen and they actually they actually cost they weren't producing electricity but to keep them warm to winterize them uh they're they're uh, using electricity so they're a net cost to the grid not adding to the grid and uh i was hoping someone would walk into the trap because this was in minnesota and the guy says, well, they should have winterized. They said, Scotland, where it's colder than there, uh, we don't have any problems with windmills. They should have winterized the windmills. I, I said, oh, I didn't realize that Scotland is colder than Minnesota. Oh, interesting. And secondly, uh, Minnesota has winterized the windmills. They're full. That's why they have to keep them warm with electricity to run a motor to, to keep those things uh, warm so they can be winterized. Anyway, it's fun. But it's like, and I said, so basically, you don't know what the hell you're talking about. I said, ah, oh, I shouldn't say that, but I still hit send because it felt good for an instant second. But I was like, ah, oh, got to stop engaging the trolls, man. Uh, somebody said, uh, you want to uh, put, you want to add to the fire that's keeping you warm and starve the fire that's burning you down, if that makes sense. I'm butchering this. I thought that's my man, Owen Benjamin. He said that. He said, I thought that was great. This is one of the first things I heard him say. So that's actually pretty profound. You want to add to the fire that's keeping you warm and uh, 
choke or starve the fire that's burning you down. Essentially, don't feed the trolls. <laughs> don't feed them, man. Because all you're doing is you're adding to the fire that's taking you down with it, if that makes sense, with them, if that makes sense. But the fires that are keeping you warm, the people here, uh, you want to add to that, you know, engage, talk, love, pray, be happy, smile, you know, do what you can. Uh, cute humor saying, I'm uh, quitting at 55. If I can work longer than that, the tax will kill me if cancer does it first. Jake says he loves rural living in Western in Western Mass and Western uh, Mass there, Jake. Um, and remember, so here's our man, Jake, living in the Mecca, probably the most liberal state in the union. All right. Now, here's the issue. If you don't have a lot of money on paper, you don't pay that much in taxes. I cannot stress this enough. Don't. This is why I am not contributing to uh, uh, to tax deferred accounts. I, I just I cannot stress this enough. If you don't have that much money to begin with, it doesn't look like you have that much income for which to tax you. And as such, you don't pay that much tax, even in Massachusetts. Massachusetts actually isn't as bad as a lot of people think. Just be careful up there, Jay, because they do have a pretty sick, they have the worst estate tax in the union now, does the Commonwealth. And I'm sure old Charlie Baker is on that. He's going to save us all. Anyway, just recognize that Massachusetts estate tax. Last I saw is a million bucks, a million bucks, which is all inclusive. If you own it, it's going into your estate, which includes life insurance. Just FYI, if you own life insurance, even if you name your wife as the beneficiary or your kids as the beneficiary, it is going into your estate and would be taxed as such. Now, if your estate is being left to your spouse, you'll get a deferral on that. She will pay the estate tax upon her death. But if it's not left to her, it's going to kids or to your buddy Josh, um, it will be subject to a state tax in Massachusetts and soon probably in the federal realm again, too, because Sniffy Joe wants to bring it back to, I think it, I think it was a two million exemption or four million exemption. I can't remember, but it was it was pretty low from where it is today. So just FYI, uh, and, you know, it'd be funny because the Democrats, you know, they control it all and they got, you know, I mean, it's a. It's, uh, it's not a sizable majority in either house, but they control it, man. They can they can pass and and whatever legislation they want. So if they want to, you know, lower the estate tax exemption to kill middle class people, it's right there for the taking, man, without question. Uh, but Massachusetts is bad, so don't die in Massachusetts if you have any kind of estate, which includes real estate, life insurance, and any kind of assets that you have. Yeah, yeah. Erickson, Wisconsin. I'm very close to the camera tonight. Oh, really? I'm usually just about where I usually am. Huh. Weird, Dan. Uh, just paid our an extra $70 tag fee because our SUV is a hybrid. So you got to, so if it wasn't a hybrid, it's just pure uh, uh, gas, you'd be, you wouldn't have to pay that fee. Or if it's pure electric, you wouldn't have to pay that fee. All right. If the tax on qualified dividends and capital gains up to 40K uh, means any. Okay. And so I'm assuming you're single. So if the 0% tax on qualified dividends and capital gains up to 40K means 40K. All right. So let's, let's, let's analyze this. So if you had a $40,000 distribution from an IRA, all right. Anything from qualified dividends and capital gains from then would be taxed at 15%. Just FYI. If you had $20,000 distribution from IRA and $25,000 split up between qualified dividends and capital gains, the first $20,000 is still, not, again, we're not assuming, we're assuming this is taxable income, not, not AGI. We're assuming it's taxable income after standard deduction. So if you have $20,000 of, of uh, distributions from an IRA, plus $25,000 of qualified dividends of capital gains tax, uh, capital gains, the first 20,000, 20, excuse me, is not subject to any tax. And the next five is subject to, uh, to five, um, uh, to 15%. Hope that makes sense. So a lot of people think they can have a million dollars in capital gains, long-term capital gains and not subject to, to any tax. It's simply not true. It's just not true. So just keep that in back of mind. Now, if you have, 50, if you have no IRA distribution and you have $50,000, all 
of qualified dividends, long-term capital gains, and going on a $40,000 taxable income, only 10,000 of that is subject to 15% taxes. Hope that helps. Who let the dogs out? Um, uh oh, his parents' internet sucks. Uh, Maine, man, if you pick up a starving dog and make him prosperous, he will not bite you. This is a principal difference between a dog and a man. Yeah. Uh, Harry says, I think Harry's in New York City. I use less electricity than last month. My bill is higher this month. And it's probably because it's winter, I would think. Uh, I, I, I wouldn't blame that on, on Sniffy Joe quite yet. I'm willing to blame a lot. I'm just not, I'm not going to blame that on him yet. I'm tired of uh, – oh, we talked about that already. All right. Yeah, my man Frank, he bought XOM in November just like I did. We're rich, rich, I tell you. Yeah, right on. Max says, with stocks, I own a piece of the company. I want to be partners in the growth. 100%, man. 100%. Right. Yeah, Gates likes fake beef. Uh, Gates likes fake beef, too. Ooh, that guy just creeps me out, man. Um, the feds are working on cryptocurrency. Yeah, I, I, we, I, we, I, without question, they're working. I, I'm telling you, that we are going to a cashless society. Uh, with, that's, that's, <laughs> that's inevitable. Yeah, I think you're right. Ever since Elon bought it, uh, I completely agree, uh, Harry. So Harry says, when Elon bought uh, Bitcoin, I uh, set a four under it. I, I don't know about the four so much, but definitely gave it some uh, some staying power. But um, <laughs> can you buy pizza with Bitcoin? I mean, it just, I, we'll see. I just, I, I'm not, I'm still not convinced. The people say, ah, you're a Luddite. Luddite, Luddite, I think it's a Luddite, Luddite, whatever it is. I don't think so, man. I mean, it's uh, until you can trade with it, i.e. currency, i.e. buy things. Eh. Uh, do you like the QYLD writes cover calls on NASDAQ, pays 11% dividend on the monthly? Um, right. <laughs> Anytime you're writing cover calls, you're limiting your upside. So I mean, that's that's the issue with the cover calls, Greg. So um, you're, I mean, it, it, it's less risky than owning the what's called a naked stock. And naked stock just means you you have no, uh, you can lose everything. Uh, a naked option. That's that's what I'm gonna say. A naked option means you could literally lose everything. Uh, but it's also less risky than owning the the Q's, the Nasdaq by itself. The issue though is that it is limiting your upside. Uh, because when the call gets exercised, <laughs> you're either taking having the shares taken from you at a higher price, or the shares go down, which I don't know, I mean, at least you got some income for it, or stay flat. So when you're writing covered calls, the the best thing is that volatile, but not so volatile the shares get taken away from you, and not so volatile on the downside that you're so far underwater that you'll never get it back. You really want volatility, but to stay flat. And uh, NASDAQ is not known to stay flat over a course of three to five years' time. So I'm not a fan of that. Assuming a retirement age is 65, generally, uh, generally, when do you move from wealth accumulation to wealth preservation? Uh, I always look about two years ahead, Dave, uh, David, and it looks like he's shown Alabama. Oh, boy. So we'll give them the benefit of the doubt because, you know, the SEC, um, yeah, you know how I feel about the SEC. Alabama is the exception. I get it. And LSU last year, I get it. In the last couple of years, I got to hang my head in shame. The SEC has played out. There's a time there, though, SEC was going uh, less than 500 in bowls, and everyone's still saying, but we're winning the championship. And I say, yeah, but the Patriots are winning the championship, too, the Super Bowl. So we're going to say the AFC East is the best uh, freaking division. The Patriots are winning the championship. And we're saying, okay, so the Patriots win the championship uh, from the AFC East, but the AFC sucks. The, the Alabama's win the championship from the SEC, but the SEC is going freaking sub-500 five, in the bowls. But the SEC the best conference ever. Just because ESPN says it. Yeah, but the last two years – not true, not true. SEC has, has made a fool out of me. That's for damn sure. Anyway, I say two years before you retire. We want to make sure you don't get bumped, man. We want to make sure you got at least at least two years of cash, man. At the very minimal, two years of cash. We can't have you getting bumped off in those first two years. It just can't. 
Um, and so I, I just said at, at that stage, preservation is more important than accumulation. So just lay off the gas, get two years of cash on the side and just hang tight, man. But I'm, you might miss some growth. Well, that you should have been getting those growth the last 35 years. Uh, you need these two years to just get everything in order. You cannot afford a 2000, a 2001, a 2002 or a 2007, eight, nine. You can't do it. Um, Yeah, I've talked about the rule of 55 a million times, man. So the rule of 55, just remember, folks, if you leave work, your company, uh, from when you turn the age of 55 and you leave your money at your employer, you have access to it without penalty. All right. As long as you don't roll it to an IRA, you have access to it without penalty, but not without taxes. You're still paying income tax. So just keep that in the back of your mind. It's, uh, it's the rule of 55, essentially. It just says, hey. I'm 55 years old. I just quit my crappy old job at Coke because I don't want to hear Robin D'Angelo. Uh, I'm going to leave my money in the employer plan. I have access to that SANS, that's us French speakers, without uh, without paying uh, a penalty, a 10% early distribution penalty. The same rule now because Trumpster uh, is for 50 if you're a federal employee, uh, not even a federal employee, if you're a law enforcement officer, a EMT, a first responder, a border patrol agent of some sort. Uh, so you can be a sheriff's deputy. And if you leave uh, when you hit 50 or over, the same rule applies. If you have a TSP, if you have a 403B, it doesn't matter. So if you leave 50 as a law enforcement officer and you have to look at first responder, essentially is what it is. Uh, if you're, and again, you could be the sheriff, the county, the town. You don't have to be a federal. It don't have to be. Uh, but anyway, long story short, that's pretty sweet. So if you're a, a, any kind of law enforcement agent in some regard, or some first responder, first responder, excuse me, uh, the rule of 50 is applicable to, which is pretty cool, man. Uh, yeah, right there. My Jeep Wrangler. You see, and, and uh, Jeremy's driving a 2004 Jeep Wrangler. We know he's a, he's going to be good to retire. Uh, Harry, both his cars are sticks, too. Right on, man. Uh, take out your garage door opener, too, and lock the door from the front. Uh, yeah, that's a great, that's a great point, uh, Kim. Uh, around 2,500 bucks for a hundred dollar face value junk means dates, not readable. So no coin collecting value. Wow. Yeah. But that, from a coin collecting, I mean, that's, I, I think coin collecting is pretty cool actually, but that's not the point. What we're trying to do is we're trying to say, Hey, look, man, I want to make sure I got some coinage to trade when the calamities come. Uh, Uh, stick sucks and stop and go traffic to get one prevent a theft that never happens. Well, I don't really drive and stop and go traffic anymore, so that's good. All right, uh, junk means pre 1964 coins. Did not know that. All right, uh, I would love to hear the case for retirement at 50, setting up a five year annual Roth conversion ladder. Well, you can't, and uh, you can't do that, so uh. Oh, compared to waiting until I got what you're saying. All right. So John says, you'd love to hear the case for retiring at 50, setting up a five-year Roth annual conversion ladder, as opposed to waiting until age 55 and using rule of 55. Well, the uh, the issue there is the, the point about using the rule of 55 is that you can spend the money without paying a penalty. You still got to pay a tax without paying the penalty. So if you're just doing Roth conversions, um, how are you going to spend the money from 50 to 55, essentially, if that makes sense, or even until 59 and a half? I don't know why you do Roth. Frank, I don't, if you're only going to do it, let's see, Roth conversions, um, if you're, you're still going to pay penalty and taxes on your on your gains after you do the conversion, I, I just I don't get what the point would be, frankly. So w what are we trying to accomplish by doing Roth conversions just to spend that money five years later? I still have penalties and taxes to pay. Um, because I'm not, I'm under the age of 59 and a half. Yeah, that seems like a little bit too cute by half, if you ask me. Um, that's why, again, I don't put it into pre retirement accounts. I'm 50 right now. I mean, I'm building up my post retirement accounts like crazy because I, I mean, I, I, I would, I wish I would not have had an IRA right now. Let's just put it that way. It would have gone a long way to help me financially, but, uh, you know, it was water under the bridge. Uh, when I started my business, I took $100,000 out of my 401k, which is in my IRA. I had to pay 10% you know, early distribution. That's 
ten thousand bucks, and then on top of that was twenty percent tax bracket, the state in Georgia, a uh, state and feds. So it cost me one hundred thirty thousand bucks to net a hundred thousand bucks, and that was uh, that was painful. And if I could have avoided all that, that would have been wonderful. That's for damn sure. If I would have paid all those taxes while well, I had money coming in, making pretty good money in my previous jobs. You know, and from a, a spreadsheet might not seem like the best way to go, but from reality on the ground, that would have that would have helped me immensely. That's for sure. Smash the like button, yes, sir. If you shop local online auctions, you may get silver sets for less than the going silver price. Oh, that's cool. The riot is good for Bitcoin. Uh, the conversion ladder set lets you remove the contribution without penalty. Yeah, we still gotta live. Uh, The Fed, oh God bless her, Lodella. Right on. I get a, I got 11 years and five months. You can access 401k at a younger age than 50. Yeah, we top of that. All right. Is Osprey, is Osprey or Grayscale a good way to invest in Bitcoin? Man, I got no idea what those are. So I don't know. Uh, David Jones in Alabama at 65. Is it true you'll no longer pay property tax on your house now that you ooh, man. Hey, hey, hey. Alabama at 65. Is it true you no longer pay property tax on your house once you hit 65? That is what I'm talking about. All right. Right there. Yep. Whose money are you living off? That's exactly right, Tom. 100%. All right. China banned Bitcoin. 500 times, now look how well that's gone. Maybe Bitcoin is using to be Oh, interesting. That's a good point here. Maybe Bitcoin is being used to suppress gold. Ah, during this money printing frenzy. That is interesting. Yeah. Because there was no Bitcoin, gold would be taken off. And all those gold bugs are losing out to Bitcoin players now, aren't they? I wonder who would be buying up gold because it's, we'll say it's undervalued. So if everyone's buying Bitcoin as a hedge against inflation, which I, I literally just makes no sense to me, but let's just say they are, that normally would be reserved for gold. Would a smart trade then be loading up on gold? If you think Bitcoin is going to have to come back to earth at some point, which I absolutely do. Huh. Now that's interesting. Good call, Harry. Every now and again, Harry shows up and brings some 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 freaking good stuff here. That's good. So I bet you could look and see some of the globalists, the cabal. I bet they're buying up gold like crazy. I don't know. I'm just literally speculating off the top of my head. But I bet you could see some of these freaking big banks or big, you know, buffets of the world buying up gold. I don't know. But uh I wonder if old Elon himself is buying up gold. That's interesting. Uh, Cute says, I think Bitcoin's a fad. It's not the mark of the beast either. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Uh, my man Harry's, I'm actually building position SQ because of the cashless push. How much is too much in a traditional IRA? I eat, well, uh, <laughs> uh, let's get crack. Oh, man, let's get cracking. Let's get cracking. Release the cracking. Um, I'll be banned by saying it. I, ben, I tell you, man, just uh, there's no answer to that, uh, my man. How much is too much to avoid the tax on He says a million or two million. There's no answer to it to that because we just don't know the circumstance. But I will tell you, when you start getting up to seven figures, you better start looking. Uh, that's for sure. Now, if you're especially if you're married, remember the point about the tax bomb is that you got. Your income taxes, when you're first starting out in retirement, are low, all right? So they're down here. And then what happens is, as you hit RMDs, they go up. And what happens here is, with RMDs, that that's going to make your Social Security start uh, subject to taxation, potentially put in higher Medicare premiums, which is only going to get worse, higher uh, adjusted gross income for higher income tax, whole thing. Uh, make your qualified dividends, long-term capital gains subject to taxation, many, many, many different things that could come. Now what happens is you die and your wife's taxes are way up here. That's the widow's tax trap right there. Because now you're a single taxpayer, or she is, versus a married filing jointly taxpayer. But be given that you're close to the same age, 
she will have the same roughly RMD table that you will have. And as such, you're leaving her with that tax bomb because she's going to inherit the same required minimum distributions, but she is only a single taxpayer. And by the way, there's no such thing as a qualified widower. If you don't have, you got to have minors. All right. Just FYI, you can't say my wife is a, she'll file as a qualified widower for two years after my death. No, it doesn't work like that. Look up what qualified widower is. It's not Charlotte has proceeded as uh, survived me. And now she's a qualified widower. I mean, which she would be today because we have kids. But if we're you know, sitting on the freaking front porch, uh, you know, smoking and joking, and I just fell over um, because of my hyperbole uh, just finally killed me, uh, she would not be a qualified widower. We'd be married finally jointly for that tax year. And the very next tax year, she's a single taxpayer. Just keep that in mind. Uh, Yeah, I saw that Mr. Gates trying to buy the largest private service aircraft. Yeah, these guys. And no one cares other than us. We're the weird guys. Yeah, I agree. The, the point about a cashless society is to make a social credit system. I'm 100% right. And it's freaking, but it's already here. We already have it. You say anything that's not for polite society, you're canceled, man. It's crazy. Crazy. I heard a Luke Combs, some country singer. I, I don't know if you follow Austin Foreman on YouTube. You should. I love Austin Foreman. He's the guy who did uh, uh, Pallets Full of Ballots. Oh, that guy's fantastic. Anyway, apparently Luke Combs is apologizing because he had a Southern a rebel flag, a Confederate flag on his guitar in 2015. <laughs> I got to do better is what he said. I said, the minute you say you have to do better, I know you're a clown. No one says I got to do better. No one says that. No one says, I've, I've been educated. I'm learning. I will do better. The only people who say that are people who have been so browbeaten by Nashville and their managers that just, oh, my, no one talks like that. I could do better. I, I've been educating. I'm on a listening tour. I'll do better. Ugh. I don't know who Luke Holmes is. Don't care. Uh, Nashville country can all kiss my big fat behind. But at the end of the day, I just I heard this is this is a social credit score. We're already in it, man. Um, Guns N' Roses got rid of one of their songs uh, where they use the N word from 1989. I just it's literally so. Remember what the communists said. The communists said, "We know the future. It's the past that's always changing." All right, we are literally halfway there, man. We know the future. It's the past that's always changing. Because you got to go back and rewrite the stories that we had written before. We got to change the data for NASA when it comes to global warming, climate, previous years of climate. We got to get rid of the medieval warm period. Uh, we got to just the whole thing. We got to get rid of the global cooling phenomenon of the 1960s and 1970s. The, the, everyone, this whole thing is is freaking. We're changing the past. It's, it's actually quite creepy, frankly. Yeah, 25k property tax in a bad school district, man. Ugh. Yeah, uh, uh, Bill Gates is on TV because he's rich. And all the liberals say, we don't like rich people. They love, liberals love money. They live for money. They live for money. So that way they get power from money. I mean, that's what it is. Bill Gates, when he's got money, the liberals say, they, oh, Bill Gates, I thought you didn't like rich people lives. Well, we don't. Well, why are you sweating Bill Gates so much? Because, oh, it's not because he's good looking. It's not because he's nice. It's not because you like his sweaters. It's because he's got money. That's all there is to it. And liberals love it. And we should not love it. That's not us. We shouldn't be like, oh, you got money. You're my friend. You don't got money. Go to the back of the bus. No, that's not how we are. We're like, dude, all people are the same. Bill Gates with his you know, little uh, sweater and his, uh, what's his wife's name? Melinda Gates. Ugh. Ooh. And she's actually a lot more attractive for Bill. I'm surprised. I mean, she didn't look that bad real to old Bill, but Bill, man, good night. Uh, yeah, here's my man, Gun Blazing. He's an expert on vaccines. When's your TV time? When you got that sweet, sweet money, brother? Uh, <laughs> Jeff Jones is enjoying the benefits of socialism. Okay. And they'll put you'll be the first to go, my friend. You, you call yourself a Menshevik and you'll go up against the wall first. Trust me. Um, it will we'll call Jeff our version of uh, Trotsky. 
uh, you know, you know what happened to Trotsky, right, Jeff? Yeah. I think in Illinois, registration is higher for pure EVs. Isn't that interesting? Man? Interesting. Most people that live outside of Texas complain about Texas as usual. Mm. All right. All right. All right. So TRICARE is military. Yep. Uh, right. Uh, Democrats have most of rich people who pay the state tax. Hey, let's. Yeah. Yes. But when we're talking about two to three million, that's that's the upper middle class, which is going to be a bulk of re Republicans because they're entrepreneur ish. And, uh, and, you know, uh, not only say corporate execs, but they've uh, they've done a good job to. Uh... Uh oh, my site's down again. No, way. hold on, Jess. I just got a text. Someone said my site is down. My web's now. I can't. Pay. Um, but I, look, I'm all about it. I mean, I, I've said before, I'm all about a, a wealth tax, and everyone on here gets mad at me. Um, hold on, just a second. Is my website down? No way. Because I know the rich, the uh, yeah, that's on there. All right, what's this guy talking about? Yeah. All right. So the uh, you know the, the where the wealth tax and where the estate tax would hit would be the money to leave. But I think forget all, even all that. I just say no more corporate deduct, no more charitable deductions. Get rid of charitable deductions. Our side isn't getting any of them. Very little. It's the rich money elite on the coast that's getting all the charitable deductions. The Bill Gates Foundation. The Bezos and what's his ex-wife's name, whatever her name was. It's the uh, freaking uh, Buffets of the world. They're the ones going to get the charitable deductions. You got to make you got to make it these people. You got to play these people's game, folks. You got to stick it to where it hurts. That's why you got to get involved in cancel culture. You can't say, I don't want cancel culture. It doesn't matter what you want. It wants you. So you can pretend it's like kind of like the trade war. Trump, we, we've been in a trade war since freaking time everlasting. Trump's just the first to engage it. You might not want to trade war. You're already in it, baby. So fight back for heaven's sake. That's what made Trump so appealing to me. It's like, all right, I'm going to recognize where we are and fight back. Of course, the corporate media said Trump is engaging the trade war. It's just idiotic. So Republicans, conservatives, libertarians, populists need to say, oh, all right, we want to play this game. We're going to play this game. Let's cancel you. You start saying crap, we'll cancel you. Now, we'll never get the same media to follow us, but you can pick through people's Twitter feeds if you're on Twitter. I don't know why you would, but, I mean, why you'd be on there. But, you know, you can do that. My man Turtle Boy over at Turtle Boy Sports does that. It's fantastic. He's got all kinds of people canceled. Crazy loons canceled. You're like, dude, I can't believe these people are part of our leadership. And he's from Massachusetts. But he, can't, he gets people canceled all the time who say crazy stuff. I think it's great. I'm all about it. So you play their games. Okay, Bill Gates and Warren Buffett, you don't mind uh, you're advocating for tax on the us, on all of us. Let's get rid of the corporate deductions or the, the charitable deductions. No one on the middle class America is taking much in charitable deductions. I know there are some people. I you know I do. You know what I'm saying? Because we got four kids. We got big fat mortgage interest. And we don't quite tithe, but we, we give a little bit of money away. All right, let's just say I got 10,000 charitable deductions. I'd trade that two seconds flat. For making sure Bill Gates and uh, Jeff Bezos and Warren Buffett and Bruce Springsteen and all these clowns, these fakers, pay some uh, tax. I, I would, I, I would love it. But Josh, then they're going to come after all of us. Well, we'll cross that bridge later. Remember, it took the AMT many, many years before it affected the middle class, and then when it did affect the middle class, Trump got rid of it for the most part. Not quite, but you know, basically, no, no middle class earner is paying AMT now. Where they were before, I paid EMT uh, three years, two years ago, something like that. Uh, but it took forever for us to get hit by it. And when it did, you know, we 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 cried out. We said, "Trump, save us!" And he did. Trumps are saved us. Um, it's not too bad for. Uh, okay, all right. So let's go down. Uh, Okay. Yeah, we talk about bronze plans. Oh, you okay? Good. Uh, Biden, Biden, right now he put a lid on it. He's uh, he's uh, he puts a lid on it. He sleep. Or I didn't push your thing. Biden right now is going night nights, night night. Uh, 
he chose my applesauce. He uh, he had for din. <laughs> oh man, SpongeBob. Oh man, oh, I love SpongeBob. All right, there we go. Did you hear about Hillary Clinton's dog getting killed, hit by a car? It's actually sad, but Hillary Clinton was uh, what'd she say about Romney or something like that? I can't remember. But basically, Hillary Clinton saying she said something like. Romney or Trump doesn't take care of dogs. Republicans don't, I, whatever it was, and her dog just got hit by a car. I, that sucks, but it's, you know, if a dog's going to get hit by a car, having Hillary Clinton's dog get hit by a car doesn't, uh, is, is, uh, is, it's sad for the dog. Um, actually, he's probably happy for the dog. He's like, thank God. He probably got it. He did it on purpose. I got to get out of here. That, that, the cackling witch was going to make me insane. All right, so let's see what else we got down here towards the bottom. Um, all right, Bo Biden, Josh, can you give us your thoughts on private unions? Um, I go back and forth on that. I vacillate. Uh, you know, I do think, I do think the public unions are not good. That's a fact. Um, I, I'm and even FDR. FDR was adamantly against the public unions. Um, yeah, I don't think I want to say too much more. I think there's example after example after example of public unions uh, retaining horrific employees. Private unions, I think, can serve a purpose as long as they don't engage in violent activity like they did in, in right outside Philadelphia. Um, you know, some construction company wasn't using local union labor. And as such, they, uh, they just engage in, in terrorist activity. There's just no way around that. And then the PA attorney general or something like that, the district attorney did not want to prosecute because the union had, you know, and they, they paid money for these campaigns. And that pisses me off. And I also don't like the idea that you have to join a union. I like an open shop. Well, I don't want, I don't want to be told what to do. Um, especially when the union is given to left-wing causes like freaking, uh, hell's his name. You know, the freaking guy who looks like he just came off, a uh, uh, the Politburo, Richard Trumka, you know, why should I pay for him to live large, all fly around the world, you know, on his private jets and act like he's a, a blue collar guy? Uh, and I forget, was he AFL CIO? I think I can't remember. But why should I pay for that guy? It's just to live large. The guy's a clown. He's a corporatist. He's a globalist. I mean, he's, he's and they're contributing to the downfall of America with their stupid left wing causes. With that said, a private union can help to destroy the cancel culture. It's just a fact, man. It's just a fact. And this is where um, I wish the unions would freaking straighten up and fly right. Because right now, um, I, I hate to say it, but white guys in particular, we got freaking targets on our back. Man. There's, there's just no two ways around that. There's none. And as such, if you're working for a corporation and you're a white man and you anything, you, I mean, you are walking on freaking eggshells. Any way, a casual look, casual saying anything could be used against you. We know this. And you have no recourse because there's no one there to back you up. None whatsoever. It's sad. And as such, it would be nice if there were a union to say, you can't just fire somebody just based on someone's accusation. You can't do it. And trust me, I know when I was at USA, I know a guy who lost a job because he was accused of harassment. And I know it. I know it's like it was yesterday. I know who the chick was. I know what happened. And it was all fake. But they're desperately trying to get more women in that line of the business. And uh, and her word was bond. There's no other way around that. And uh, and having been falsely accused myself in the earlier, not while I was at work, but not in my professional career, but when I was still in college and having been arrested and having gone to the trial and the chick who accused me just didn't have to show up. Even though I had, I mean, the whole thing was, a, was just a, was just a, a scam. It's a scam. But I'm the one who had to suffer. I'm the one who had to go to jail. I'm the one who had to pay the attorney. I'm the one who had to fly back from Arizona to uh, to a courthouse in Clarendon on Arlington, now uh, Clarendon Boulevard, Clarendon Ave in, Ar uh, Ave in Arlington, to go in front of a judge when the freaking chick who accused me wasn't there. She just said, "I'm not showing up." And I said, "What the hell is this?" So where do I get my money back? I just spent freaking six months of my life, probably ten thousand dollars, and I had to spend a night in the freaking you know little pen there in, in uh, Arlington County, all because some chick I told her you can't freaking smoke in the non-smoking room. 
And she says, where are you? I'm going, well, I'm going to go to American University Law School. I do what I want. I said, you can't just go right there. The non-smoking room's like 10 feet there. Just go over there. And she got in my face. She literally pushed me against the wall. And I just walked away. I said, I said, you guys got to leave. I remember they had about three or four pitchers still there. I said, you guys got to go. And one guy said, look, man, it's just her. Just let us drink. drink." He said, that's fine. Go ahead and drink them up, but get out of here. And then she starts smoking. I said, I said, look, they're going to get out of here. Hey, long story short. Uh, so they finally left, and she was yelling bloody murder. It was the whole thing. It's just a nut. And I said, what the hell's up with this chick? She's probably uh, working for Joe Biden now. Um, anyway, I said, this is nuts. And, and about three hours later, the friggin' cops come and put braces on me. I was like, what the hell is this? They said, you're getting arrested for uh, not, uh, for assaulting or punching, whatever it was, pushing. <laughs> it's the exact opposite. Uh, thankfully, thankfully. There's these two. We, I, I, I was a manager of this brew pub that was big and dark, and it was just it was dank. And way in the corner, because I had you know they were in the and long story. Way in the corner, there's this couple who saw the whole thing. And when they saw me uh, getting walked away in cuffs, they told one of the bartenders here, "Have this guy calls me if he needs us to um, to be a witness." I said, "Thank God." And I didn't have to – ultimately, they came to the court and everything. Ultimately, we didn't have to testify or anything because the chick never showed up, and she just went on with her merry life. Crazy. So this is where I'm sympathetic to private unions because this stuff has happened all the time, man, all the time. And if uh, – you know, there's got to be some kind of way to defend yourself other than – my word against yours, because you're white. Your word is, is is you're you're on the you're on the short end of the stick, man. All there is to it, no other way around that. It's only going to get worse. It's only going to get worse. So the best thing, and this is why why I encourage people to be entrepreneurial, because you know most people, I mean, all people don't want to deal with this crap. There are very very few people that black, white, women, men that want to be involved in cancel culture. It's just some some weird lunatics for some reason that are dominating the culture. I don't know why. Very, very few people want to be involved in this crap. Most people just want to work, get by, and live a life with their neighbors and friends and family. That's it. But somehow, you know, about 10%, maybe 15% of the population is lunatics, and they are controlling everything. And as long as the lunatics are in control, um, you know, you got to take measures to defend yourself. And sadly, in this case, it's uh, private unions. But I don't think that's – I think those, that bridge, that ship has sailed. They'll never come back. And as such um, – there's not much you can do. There's not much you can do other than start your side hustle now, get out of debt so that way you can be self-employed. Because if you're self-employed, you can do things like this until YouTube cancels you, which will certainly happen. Um, yeah, dog got suicide. Exactly. Oh, I got tons of stories from USA. But I'm going on two hours now, cute. So I think I'm going to get ready to call a night. Um, <laughs> Uh, so Kim, who, all right. So Kim is trying to move from California. Lots of people are trying to move from California because they can't afford it. Who is paying for this stuff? Who's paying for a teacher with a, with a pension over a hundred thousand dollars a year with a cost of living adjustment with healthcare paid for. Now I don't blame that teacher. I blame the politicians and the teachers unions. This is why FDR said we cannot have public sector unions because the politicians will give away the store as long as the teachers unions vote for them in mass, not just vote, but campaign for them, rabble rouse for them on the taxpayer dime. That is a fact. We know that for a fact. And as such, John Corzine comes to mind in New Jersey. Whatever you guys want, teachers unions, I will do. By the time that bill comes due, I'll be long gone. He should be in jail, of course. He's not because he's a rich Democrat. He should be in jail. But he said, look, you vote for me, I'll do whatever you want. You got a rubber stamp. Now, the irony of it all is that we're seeing a lot of these unions want, you know, with a Mayor Lightfoot in Chicago and other places uh, where they're having to come to Jesus moment. There's no more money for them. No more money. And the same thing is going to happen in California. There is no money to pay for their incredible demands. So public unions work, yeah, because it's a it's a freaking it's a it's a voting mob of people who say this is what we want, 
and the the the, the freaking the politician says, "Why would I campaign against that? I'm not gonna. I'll I'll get them on my side. That gives me a leg up. Absolutely. But I'm not the one who said I want public unions. I'm just listening to what FDR said. And FDR is the uh, you know, never mind his Japanese internment camps. Uh, never mind his at being adamant against public unions, but he, the left, loves FDR. He's like the freaking the darling of the dance. So um, <laughs> the, the problem here is that we have a public sector job that gets paid a hell of a lot more than the private sector equivalent across the board. Federal government, state governments, probably not local governments, but certainly state and federal. And that's, that's simply unsu- they can't sustain that that those days cannot keep going on. Public sector jobs should not pay more than the uh, private sector. And they do by far, it's not close because of what you just said there. Um, that, look at that, no cost for medical vacation, medical pay for your whole family. The interesting thing when you say that, it actually kind of pisses me off because all the people I talk to, myself included, how much it costs for us to, for a family, for medical, it's nuts. It's absolutely uh, 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 a two-tiered society of the government workers versus the private sector. It's absolutely, it's disgusting, actually. I frankly don't blame the the, the employees so much um, because, look, I mean, they're getting what they can. They got to take care of number one. But I, at some point, you got to say this: this ain't right, man. I'm sorry. This isn't right, and uh, it, it's but it's going to happen. I mean, you know, mathematics is mathematics. Even in even in California, two plus two will still equal four. And as such, you know, they're going to run the private sector off, which they're doing in in numbers. And as such, you're going to be left with a bunch of uh, public sector unions getting paid certainly more and more and more than what's remaining there. But there won't be a tax base to pay them, and it's all going to fall. And look, it's it's all going to. This is going back to we'll end up with this. This is my whole thing. Going back to the energy, California is it can't it's it's a freaking fantasy that they're going to get all their energy. I, I'm not just talking electricity; I'm talking energy uh, from uh, solar and wind. It's just not going to happen, man. And, and they don't like hydro; they don't like nuclear. It's just it's not going to happen. So that that is going to stop. That's going to come to a crashing halt. But more than just brownouts, it's going to be Venezuela part two. Throw in the insane obligations on the pensions and whatnot. It's, it's nuts. It's, 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 I mean, it cannot exist the way it is. You know, I don't know. 10 years, maybe 20. I don't know. But it can't. But then you go to the, the state of just our own infrastructure in the United States, where we're going more and more that model, the capital market who's being run and run more by social justice warriors. And you got to say, how long can we? Keep going like this. I, you know, I don't know. I mean, for a while, right? I mean, Rome didn't fall in a day. But I think you have to say it's inevitable that unless something fractures significantly, um, th- there's going to be some tr- hard times. I really believe that. I don't know when, but it'll be a whole lot harder if you have lots of debt, if that makes sense, and you don't have any cash on the side, and you don't know how to at least grow some food for gardens and stuff. I mean, it's going to be hard. And uh, I just think at the end of the day, we have enough warning of what is happening across the country to say there's some bad things coming. And that doesn't, I'm not being a scaremonger. I just think, let's be common sense here. We've had a great run for 70 years. Will that be another 70 years like that? I just don't see how. I just don't. We don't have the work ethic. We just don't. We have automations coming down the pike. Uh, we have debt as far as the eye can see. That does not mean inflation. It does not mean inflation. But it just means at some point you can only you, you can't just keep living this way and expecting it just to remain like it was the last 70 years. It, it's just it's not gonna happen. On top of that, this insane energy policy is nuts. It's just as silly. And uh as such, you know, thinking ways to get your side hustle to pay off your debt, thinking of ways to start learning how to grow your own food, thinking of ways to get some. Uh, you know, to, to at least produce some of your own uh, energy, uh, you know, be it through wood stoves, you know, I mean, heating is an energy, um, you know, be it through, uh, you get a couple solar panels, absolutely to charge of batteries. Um, I mean, insulating your house better. I mean, all these things are going to be important. You're having sources of water they can tap into. I, I hope we learn from Texas. 
It's one thing to laugh at California with rolling blackouts, but what happens in Texas, uh, but it's a once in a lifetime or once in a hundred year storm. Okay, well, once in a hundred years there, but it might be once in a hundred years where you live. You know, we had snowmageddon here in Atlanta. That's where I started becoming a real prepper right there. I, I was not prepared, not in the least. It was it was quite frightening, actually. And I'm from Maine. I'm naturally uh, inclined, inclined to be prepared because in Maine, you got the freaking um, the winters that come. And winters are always deathly if you're not prepared. You know what I'm saying? And so in Maine, you're always a prepper by nature. And as such, you know, when I was so unprepared in the snow and what happened here in Atlanta, I said, I can't let that happen again under the best of my ability. And as such, we start taking you know provisions to make sure that that does not happen. You know, just, hell, do you have enough for at least two weeks of food? You know, Costco's got a couple deals right now. I just bought some more freeze-dried food. It's 30 bucks off uh, some Mountain House or Arc. I think it's 30 bucks off Arc, you know, a uh, 30-day supply for one person. And I think it's like 2,000 calories a day. Eh, 60,000 calories, man. You know, it's just all freeze dried, it's shipped. You get one or two of those, you know, every couple, you know, every couple months. A couple gold, uh, you know, quarter gold, you know, quarter ounce, ten ounce gold things every, you know, couple times a year. You know what I'm saying? You know, start growing some seeds under grow lights inside. It doesn't take up LED lights. Doesn't take up much electricity. Uh, I just think this is going to be important going forward. And as such, it's, uh, you know, you'll be prepared to deal with the calamities that are coming. I don't know when they're coming, but California is not going to last. There's no other way around that. And uh, you know, hopefully gruesome gets recalled, but hopefully they don't replace them with a freaking, you know, a, a Schwarzenegger. Guy's a clown. Guy's a clown. Oh, good night. But I think they're going to – I think who is the one guy seemed like he might – Hmm. I forgot who it was, but so what they do is I think it's a jungle primary actually. So during the recall, they say it's like two votes. They said, do you want to recall gruesome? Yes. Who do you want to vote for? And I think gruesome will be on there, but it's like the top two vote getters. I can't remember how it works, but uh, I can't remember. Man, it'll be interesting. So, all right. I'm going to sign out here. My, uh, my, my, uh, my throat hurts. Yeah. So sue her. You can't, you can't sue somebody if they got no money. I, I, see, someone said sue about that chick who accused me. Um, you can't just sue somebody. I, I mean, you can, but what are you going to do? I mean, freaking, she's at American University Law School. What am I going to do? Sue for her, uh, for what exactly? I don't want to go to law school. So, anyway. All right, my friends, I'm going to get on out of here. We'll see you guys later. Thanks for being here. Much of gracias. Yeah, California's red, I and mean, that's where Nixon, right? Reagan came from. Nixon, Reagan. Um, uh, the Missouri Immigration Act, Reagan signed. Oh, man. That started the ball rolling, man. All right, we'll see you guys. Thanks again.